Pablo Lee, what's serious? Harold Reynolds this year. Oh. Yeah, I kind of just got uh, swept away. He never, yeah. got, he never got his day in court, well, so to speak. That we knew of. Uh-huh. He probably was just like, yeah, he got me dead to rights. <laughs> I grew up just about everything that moved in this uh, studio here. Don't want to fight it. Uh-huh. I don't know. How do you go from being a an anchor guy for like 12 years to the next day just being fired and there was no real to-do about it? All right. I mean, geez, give us some something. Is that how your legacy is going to come crashing down, Stephen? I think so, probably. All of the sexual harassment, just juices will just come to the surface or what? (laughs) Hmm. Yes, I have a long line of that, I'm sure. Oh. I saw your boy, uh, Scott Van Pelt, on the sports center the other night. Oh, yeah, so did I. Uh, Scotty boy. Yeah. Yeah, Yes. Is he like the skinny little blonde dude who wears glasses? Is that who? Because that's who I'm picturing. Yeah. I don't think he has any hair, really. I don't think he has, he has oh, any bald, hair. He but it would shaved. be blonde. Yeah, it would be. If, oh, I think that's he what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sitting next to Stuart Scott. I wonder whatever happened uh, if he called her back, just called her bitch, and everything that just was crying out to be said. <laughs> probably getting married. Mm hmm. <laughs> She thought, oh, how cute. Why do you say he's my boy when he's the, you're the one who <laughs> loved his message? Well, it's kind of. A joke, but yes. Oh, I took you so seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, how does he do as a sports center anchor? He does well. And what are you doing watching Sports Center? I don't know. I just happened upon it one night. You happened some, upon it? Well, for some reason. Can you can you happen right off it or no? <laughs> oh, I did. I saw him on there, and I said, "Oh, I can't." But he's my idol, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's your idol. Okay. I've been looking to see maybe he got fired for doing that or something, but he was on there. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, you can't get fired for being a dork. For leaving <laughs> goofy messages and being dorky? Well, I mean, there Man, was... Man, you wouldn't have stood a day in this place. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find that... Uh, oh, never mind. Oh. He would be... Hookers and coke. No, no, wrong guy. <laughs> He's the guy who definitely didn't get that's, fired. That's the one Stephen really envied. Yeah. <laughs> Deep inside. What happened to oh, Marv sorry. Albert? I mean, he was fired and then came back, and now he's stronger well, than ever, right? Well, that was his bogus allegations. That was just some woman that it was proven over time just made the whole thing up. Well, didn't they go to court and stuff, though? Yeah, but uh, he just, yeah. So he doesn't like show tunes? He doesn't, he doesn't like, sing he doesn't in dance lingerie? Around his, doesn't sing show tunes in lingerie. <laughs> doesn't bite women on the back. He does screw around on his... on his. He did screw around on his wife, but no, he can't well, play a man for that. Right. Oh, he can't. I mean, geez. If it's put part in front of, of you, you can't say no. Part of being a man. <laughs> What's a man supposed to do? Oh, he's supposed to turn down and be faithful, yes. Mm-hmm. Like I've done. Every time. Mm-hmm. Wait. You're all looking at me not knowing what to believe. <laughs> Think the best of me. We do. You may just be right. Okay. Huh? We may. <laughs> or we are. Well, you know, I like to keep it a... A little mystery. A little mystery, yeah. Oh. Because we found out how boring it is to Jeez. be... No. Anyway, <laughs> where are we going with this? I don't know. He's the one who brought up your boy, Scott Van Pelt. <laughs> the bottom line I'm, is I'm turning into everything you thought Kilbreath really was. Oh, wow. Right before your very eyes. Really? Wow. Uh-huh. wow. What oh, a welcome. metamorphosis. Not to say he is everything you thought he was, but little by little you realize he never was. <laughs> I mean, we all thought he was smart and a straight-A student. Not true. We all thought he was <laughs> conservative, <laughs> level-headed, and yeah. uh, and basically uh, a just down-to-earth sexual person when really... Who knows what goes beyond closed doors and beyond the mind of Stephen Kilbreath? He's a predator. <laughs> Whoa! I would go that far. God, but I, no See, kidding. Stephen likes to take it extra <laughs> far, so you I think know. that there's no chance of him actually being the, yeah, somewhere better. in the middle of the shade of gray there? Yeah. Nobody, nobody can hear you scream, Incarnation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, I can't find this guy, Van Pelt. Oh, whatever. damn it. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but there's never a problem finding this guy. And I'm telling you right now, oh, there, geez. T-Man, you know, Stoneway Concrete is on strike. You know what? Hey, Steven. He wants did... so badly to be a roving reporter. He I wants to find a story to follow. Or what happened? Hey, T-Man? Yes, John good, John. Good morning, T-Man. The same to you, John John. And welcome to the program. Thank now, you for having me, John John. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Stoneway Contract has yeah. put a... Hold on Sound Trance's light rail project because the Stoneway Concrete Company is on strike. Mm. And I'm really upset about that. 
as me, a union representative. Yeah, that's who you are, yes. You are? Well, yeah. Well, I'm a part of union, but I still represent all unions out there. I don't care who they are. I'm going to be out in the street this morning, oh, and I'm going to represent, hold on to you, man. I'm going to represent Stoneway Contractor you. Local 302. Can I say that? Yes, right. right. <laughs> They're on strike right now, right. and I, I would love to see them... Get a better contract. Okay, well, you go out and report live for us this morning, all right? Okay, well. All right, we'll so talk to you then. See oh, you there. Get a pair of concrete ask, shoes. Yeah, I was going to ask him a you know, real serious question to see just how much he knew. Oh, okay, go ahead. Hey, it's John. not like he's going anywhere. Oh, oh John, well, John. He I, it up again. Yes, Terry, what you got um, a question so, for me? So what are their issues there, Mr. Uh, local 302 representative? Well, I'm not part of that union, but I'm representing them as a portion of the union. <laughs> right. I'm saying well, as a got, representative, got, you think you know their issues. Pay? They have pay what? Issues? Well, I was going to say, yeah. man, they, they have pay issues. Right. You know, Stoneway Contract That's a safe is a bet. major yeah, it is. A <laughs> company out there. Right. Would you all sh turn your mics off so I can speak? No. Give me some minute for... Well, I guess we ain't got too many minutes. Cause yeah, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, there he is. He's John John, reporter to the stars, trying to find... A story. A story to follow. <laughs> and uh, we'll see where this one leads, Terry. Okay. Obviously, it's, it's got a money. really good potential of leading where all the other stories that John John has attempted to follow. Nowhere! Fast! We shared a brief but exceptionally meaningful modeling court relationship last Saturday. I'm sure you're Stephen, do you play this in the background when you watch a bunch of sports? Yeah, you know. I don't listen to what he's saying on the show. <laughs> seeing him and hearing this, it, yes. it totally fits him. Yeah, it does. It so it fits him. Days, I, I figured sending text gets real tedious with the typing and whatnot. It's really easy to just actually call up. And yes, texting does involve typing. Message, he's right. Yeah. Which I'm great at. Yeah. Um, enjoy me. You. I knew as soon as you left, I'd never see you again. I, I, as a veteran of many Dewey Beach summers, and that's the way she wanted it. <laughs> you have your crew of people. Once you lose track of somebody, they're going someplace else, and you're never going to see them again. And that's how that went. So, well, I can't believe she had to sit through this message. I. Uh, it's hard for you. I, I can't even sit through it. Just <laughs> rambling like a mental patient. Understood. <laughs> But for what it's worth, you did pass everything on my checklist. You think at this point she says, oh, goody. Whew, I was so worried. Like, I, I have a very lengthy checklist, and any one strike, you'd be out. Mm -hmm. As if I really should even have a checklist. I mean, at this point, I probably should talk to any woman that isn't have a, you know, like club-footed and like an amputee. You have four limbs, and you don't have Bell's palsy and a club foot. I probably ought to be real, like, just sign it up. But I do have a checklist, and uh, as I recall, you were passing everything. Well, why, why did it look so hard to find this, Terry? I don't know. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> it's like worse like than now, like the second yeah, time. Yeah, you, you know some bad movies get better every time you watch them? Yes. This one is not one of those oh. situations, Terry. Yeah, I don't think I like him anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you going to break up? This guy's a dweeb. He's annoying. He's got nothing to offer. Right. That's why he rambles on. He's he's scrapping for something. Uh, sooner or later, he may step on something that uh, she may be interested in. Maybe. Yeah. Do women listen? Are women the type of creatures, Terry, that listen to a uh, voicemail as long as it may go on? Because I know men don't. Uh, I know men, uh, especially myself, Terry. Mm -hmm. If if someone leaves anything more than like a fifteen second voicemail, yeah, they they may get me to hear the whole thing. Yeah. But anything more than that, <laughs> your chances are nil. Okay. I, yeah. I think it kind of depends. Like, she probably ran through it the first time, and then if she saved it to replay it, I think she kind of maybe got halfway through and said, okay, never mind. It, it's, it is as bad or as good as I thought. You know how many voicemails I've, I've deleted Before? 10 seconds in, <laughs> never maybe. really knowing what they truly left me? Hey, t Matt, Steven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think when you just hear it and see it's my number, you delete it. <laughs> Steven, you're not that type, are you? You listen to a voicemail as long as it may go, aren't you? Uh, well, yeah, hey, I hear what people want to talk about this. <laughs> I don't want to get into any deep conversations yet. Okay. All right? Fine. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> the T-Man. I think of this little Filipino girl, Terry. This little Cassie girl. Oh, what do you I think like her. She's, I think she's only 18. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Diddy did well discovering her. She was, uh, Diddy discovered her? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably did, I think I heard this somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he discovered her in quite... A uh, memorable way. Yeah. 
Zip, uh, zipping up. Okay, so let's talk about your musical career here. <laughs> oh, now stop. Mm-hmm. No. It's a cute little innocent thing. Is that right? Yeah. Is that how you see her? Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. Sure it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was down here at the station uh, last week. Really? Yeah, I oh. didn't see her, but uh, Vea the Pooh saw her. Wow, we never get to see anybody who comes down. What do you think? As hot as I've seen pictures or what? She's pretty hot. Mm-hmm. She's pretty hot. Your I'm type? Like, she could, like, be a little bit thicker. Oh, you like a little thicker. See, a little I, like bit him, thicker. I like him skinny like uh, she know, may she be because really I like to, like, break them apart. But you like them uh, thicker. And just a little bit thicker. So just tell her, throw a couple cheeseburgers down her throat and call you. <laughs> just a steak or two. And yeah, yeah, take her to sport, throw a couple of bonus wings, upper butt, and you're good, right? Yeah, that's wow. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Vinny, who's 130 pounds, yeah. likes them a little thicker. Yeah. 150 to 100. Me, who... Uh, <laughs> He likes to correct. He doesn't want anyone out there to think he's 130. No, that'd be way skinny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a hulking 150. I'm 150. <laughs> Demon, don't shortchange me. That's right. Me, who uh, has been at times 205, Terry, but now it's down to 180. I, 180? Uh, that's right, 180. Wow. You got a problem with that? <laughs> that's getting light. Steve is like, I've ne- I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> I've been at 180 for about the past uh, four months, and this is where I will stay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No extra pregnancy weight this time? No, I don't uh, have that problem, David. <laughs> you want to talk about it or what? Sounds like it. Oh, but not that. that. I'm saying that I gained weight when my I wife understand was what you were saying. There is a uh, there is that little wives' tale rumor myth. Well, it's that, not actually. But yeah, it's it's so widespread. It's been so accepted by culture. That it's become more than that. It's become mind over matter, if you will, that men, yes, will gain weight along with their pregnant wives. Now, May, I don't fall for those uh, little pitfalls, those little traps of life. Well, you're stronger than most. That's right! I didn't want to say it! <laughs> well, not an ounce. My wife's huge. Yeah. It's not huge. Well, I mean, uh, pregnancy huge. Well, huge in a good way. Huge, her. Huge stomach. Huge uh, pregnant stomach is what I'm saying. Otherwise, she's... Probably got a little bump. <laughs> she Actually, this time around, she's gotten a lot bigger than, at least as far as the timeline right. along the nine months. First time, she didn't start showing until like fifth, sixth, seventh month. Right. And now... Now, it's like yeah. muscle memory. Yep. The little... Let's uh, expand now. The little pouch <laughs> knows to expand quicker. Yeah. So she's got a lovely lady lump. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing about my pouch. It knows to be expanded. Yes. It's <laughs> got that, that way. pouch memory, Stephen. So as soon as you eat a boneless wing, your uh, your pouch just implo- or, or explodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it works. Well, I'll gain the pregnancy weight for her, then. Mm. How about I think, that? I think you're already there. <laughs> yeah. I could see where you could, though. If your wife wants a blizzard, well, I better get one, too. Then I'm already here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I who? see where that would be. Don't right. you want a blizzard, honey? Come on. Don't you want a blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not even pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you still want one. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Good morning, Al. Al? Yes, sir. What can we do for you, Al? Hey, T-Man, I'm down here at Stillingway Concrete. Oh, jeez, look what John John's inspired this morning. What's happening? John John ain't got nothing out here, man. So, uh, you would rather not see John John show up at your... That's correct. Mm -hmm. Uh Well, I'm a truck driver trying to find out why these guys are striking and and seeing if I can't get them on the air. All right, how are you? Oh, this uh, guy's going to be John John. In the morning. He's going to be John oh, John geez. to the punch of being a roving reporter. <laughs> That's going on great. You guys are for I, I never thought anyone would want to steal John John's thunder. Engineers. They're teamsters. They're, they're supporting the operating engineers. The operating okay. engineers and they want a fair contract that says a little bit more money, and they want they want language in the contract that says that they have the right to cross other people's picket lines. Oh, jeez. So the what? teamsters are supporting the operating engineers. Oh, that sounds good to me. They do not want to cross people's picket lines. Mm-hmm. We're, we're I'm, always the, I'm always for the worker, Terry. I'm always for the worker against the uh, the yeah. little guy against the man. Uh, Al, we know who they are and we know what they want, <laughs> but who the hell are you? I know. <laughs> I, I'm a truck driver myself oh, just trying okay. to help them out, too. But you're not a part of this struggle between uh, the Teamsters and this uh, particular union and uh, the company or the outfit that they're that they're up against. You're not a no, part of that. No, sir. I just uh, heard John John on the radio this morning talking about you can get down here. 
And I'm like, no, he can't before I do. Uh huh. So you thought you'd just go ahead and call in and do all the reporting. Again, Terry, never thought any caller felt the need to steal John John's thunder. But you know, he's also going to the liquor store in about a half hour, sir. Do you, do you feel the need to beat him there as well? I think I can get them there, too. Mm uh-huh. hmm. Wow. It's a race for. He's the John John one upper. <laughs> Here on the program. <laughs> Thanks, man. He's Al. Uh-huh. Now, Al. Yes, sir. Of course, when you steal John John's thunder, Uh-oh. you then have to deal with the wrath. Oh, well, that doesn't seem like a big problem because he's drunk all the time. Mm-hmm. Is John John ready to reclaim his turf or what? Uh-oh. Well, let's find out. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, you running for that. Hills to find a bottle of R&R there, Okay, anyone get any of that? No. I got the hills. How are you? You know what? Good morning. How the hell are you, Al? And I'm telling you, are you going to join me at 3803 East Washington Way South as a business district? And I should are you going to join him? Representative of the Solway Concrete. Are you a union representative, sir? No, I'm not. Okay, are you? A lot of Z's in John John's sentences. You notice that? You union, yes or no? Answer me, bitch. Oh, jeez. John John here. Hello? That's your goddamn spell. Right up the goddamn spell. I want an honest answer, sir. Are you this funny all the time? Oh, I don't know. Last time I see my D-I to the C to the K, it wasn't that funny. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> that sounds like quite the offer there, Al. Now, are you a taker or not? <laughs> I, think, I think Al's not. Are you a taker to the offer that John John has made to the D to the I to the C to the K? I don't take no D-I to the T to the C to the K. Yeah, make sure, you say, make sure you say that loud in front of the Teamsters there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm, well, I'm down here uh, uh, talking to these guys right now. And, uh, I see. They don't so want to have nothing to do with John John. Beating John John to the punch. Well, let me ask yeah. you this, yeah, no Al. I'm almost getting the sense that you're a John John fan. Is that fair to say? Oh, no, sir. I'm, uh, I'm one of your fans, man Well, I've, oh, that's nice to hear. But uh, you also can appreciate John John's calls because uh, I get a lot of emails, Terry. Never, yeah, I can appreciate his calls. Never I, you know, does it I, dissuade I me. But I'll tell you this. I get a lot of emails saying, T-Man, as soon as John John's voice comes on the air, I turn the station. Wow. <laughs> I get those I get all the time. He's stupidly drunk all the he's time. Stupidly yeah, drunk. He's stupidly drunk, and no one can argue with that, uh, with that analysis. Even when he's sober, he's stupidly sober. <laughs> now, there are a lot of people in this business, Terry, that when they get one email mm-hmm. from a listener saying, if such and such happens, I immediately turn the radio, and they will never do that something again. Right. But not me! No. I've been getting them for years about John John. As soon as I hear his voice, I turn the radio, but we stick with him. Why? We have no clue! <laughs> but he is stupidly drunk, and maybe it entertains me as well. Uh-huh. He's... Okay, man. I got to get back on the road, buddy. I just yes. wanted to call and beat John down to that fun. Okay, and you did. Wow. Now you can, you can tell your grandchildren about that. Right. Quicker to the draw than John John. <laughs> so, John John, stay home. We've already uh-huh. done the interview. Yes, the interview has been done. It's been done well. Yes. We've had all the light shed on this situation that needed to be shed, Terry. Yeah. So John John is, I guess, just uh, obsolete as far as his abilities to uh, contribute to the program. He just has nothing to offer. Why is this day different from all other days? (laughs) I have to find a new story. Uh Uh-huh. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I agree with Al that... John John just sounds drunk enough for all of us that it just allows us to feel like we, in some sense, are a little bit drunk, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> when we hear him on the air, that's the beauty. Not drunk oh, enough, geez. but I've got Not drunk enough. Yes. I talked to a Stoneway representative. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, do you have uh, enough time, T-Man? No, we heard all we needed to hear from Stoneway and Teamster representatives, John John. It's old news now. Al beat you to the punch. Al was the man on the scene. Al was the guy who brought it right to our homes. Not you, John John. Well, I bring in the home right now. And hell No, you're not hearing me. It's too late, John John. You're going to have to find another story. Yeah. Then oh. maybe Al could beat you there, too. But for, as far as this story, we just heard from a Teamsters delegate or right, a union, right, right. whoever that guy was. He sounded as official as needed to, he needed to be, Terry. Yes, he did. I know all I need to know. Holy contract. <laughs> Holy Batman? <contract. laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what? Uh, uh, four minutes. No four minutes, no three minutes, no two minutes, no one minute. We I'm had all the minutes we needed oh, from anyway. Al. We 
Al gave us all we needed to hear. Oh, geez, I don't need any more of that. It's not Christmas. Okay. <laughs> so there it is. We got the scoop. Yes, we did. We got it live from Al, Terry. We did. It was when news breaks yeah. on the Team Man in the Morning Show. Mm -hmm. Al is on the scene. Good job, Al. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Yes. And call him Al. You can. <laughs> Count on and call him Al. The Team Man. It's Brad Garrett's Divorce Shocker. Publisher. Who's Brad Garrett? Is that the brother of Leaf? Uh, no, <laughs> I wish. He, he was in uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, the big, the big dorky tall dude. Brother, yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm. Big dorky dude. Oh, Raymond. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. That guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Brad Garrett's <laughs> Divorce Shocker. Oh, geez. He seems so fun loving, Terry. He seems so cuddly, the kind of guy he is. I, I can't imagine he, everyone in Hollywood, just getting divorced. That's what it comes I down know. to. There's no one in Hollywood not in the midst of a divorce. It's Brad Garrett's Divorce Shocker. Oh, Published reports claim the Everybody Loves Raymond star hid his split from everyone for a year. Oh, but extras got the court papers showing his wife, Jill, right. filed for divorce oh. just a month ago. Mm -hmm. Ironically, Brad's newest role is playing a husband in a rocky marriage on Fox's comedy Till Death. And he recently joked with Extra about his real-life walk down the aisle. Oh. At my wedding, they threw minute rice. Brad tells uh -huh. USA Today, he and Jill, he just, who have two kids, are on good terms. He just stole a Ronnie Dennefield joke, Terry. Did he? Yes. Mm. Ronnie Dangerfield mm. dead, can't defend himself, still getting no respect. What does Brad Gilbert think? Just because he sounds like Ronnie Dangerfield, he can steal his jokes? Maybe so. Hmm. <laughs> that is sad. At my wedding, they threw minute rice. That is not your joke. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I remember, my, I remember my dad listening to tapes of Rodney Dangerfield, Terry, back when I was growing up. And I remember that joke. <laughs> my dad's a big Rodney Dangerfield fan. Brad Gilbert. Is that his name? Brad Garrett. 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 Brad yeah. Garrett stealing Rodney's jokes. Right. <laughs> Man. Not even delivering it well That's either. That's awful. Jeez. The hell is that? At my wedding, they threw minute rice. Uh-huh. And I didn't get any respect. <laughs> <laughs> and my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Bobot. Let me tell you about my doctor. What a doctor. Right. Couple routine. Mm -hmm. the whole routine. Want to just break out the whole routine while you're at it, Brad Gilbert? <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Garrett. Right. He's got his own show now. He's big time. Oh. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Well, he also played in the World Series of Poker when I was out there at the uh, main event. Oh, yeah. really? I busted out pretty damn quick, you know what I'm saying? Pity kill. Anyhow. Oh, jeez. Thank you so much. Pity kill. What a... Well, I said pity real quick, I just had to say. Uh, what else is going on, Terry? That's a Roddy Dangerfield joke. I just stole it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want it. This might interest you. Yes. Because uh, it has to do with Jenna Jameson. All right, save it for the 7 o'clock hour, Terry. What else you have? Oh, okay, then I will. Mm -hmm. Well, since we're talking about divorces and everything like that, yes. I have some an update with you See, this is perfect, yeah. On, uh, lead Heather right in Mills. from the story that we just did. Yeah, All right, absolutely. Heather Mills. I love a nice segue. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Uh, it with us. Heather Mills is saying that Paul McCartney uh, was controlling as a husband. How, how controlling can a 64-year-old man be with okay. gray hair and a wiry little uh, old man body? I don't know. Apparently, she claims that uh, he always put his own interest above hers. Well, whose interest is he supposed to put in front of his? <laughs> hers? <laughs> They're a partnership. Uh-huh. They share equally. They were together oh, for a few that. years. What, he didn't unscrew her leg every night so she got upset? <laughs> Maybe that's it. I don't know. Come but on. I think that's She's her... so freaking deranged. Well, that is her rebuttal because... She married him at a vulnerable time in his life for the money and it's going to work out perfectly. He can blame himself as much as her for allowing himself after his marriage with his first yeah. wife, who was his soulmate. Unfortunately, she passed on, yeah. and he allowed himself to feel all lonely. And because of that loneliness, he fell for some woman's trap. <laughs> A one-legged trap. Those are the worst kind. <laughs> A leg, one-legged one, huh? And now he's going to have to pay the price. Because there's no alternative. Yeah, that's true. She set him up, and he fell right into the one-legged trap. Pity kid. <laughs> wow. So, that's that. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. But like I said, he, that's her counterclaim, because he's been saying all kinds of things about her. I'm sure Linda McCartney, even while he was falling into the trap, was sending him little signals from the grave not to do it. 
Don't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Buy my frozen dinners while you're there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he didn't see the signs, Terry. you got to be able to see the signs in this world. The signs are there if you're looking for yeah, them. But, but you got any dilemmas in this world? Look look to the signs. Yeah. And if you can't figure out the signs, call Dr. T-Bit. Wow. But again, as you pointed out, he was, you know, had been crushed emotionally and yes. wasn't really... And when you're crushed emotionally, you may not see the signs right. as well as the uh, person right. who's not crushed? Right. It's mm. not clear. That's why she pounced on him. Oh, I love all women who pounces, especially one-legged women. Uh, Sherry, you're on the air. Good morning. How are you, Sherry? Fine. What can we do for you this morning? I'm curious to know if John John's ever been to a chemical dependency treatment program. <laughs> Does it sound like it? Mm-hmm. Probably not. If he has, obviously it was not effective, so what's Well, that'd be a service I would love to offer you guys. Uh-huh, that's your... I'll, I'll baby walk him to those meetings. Hmm. Those would be interesting. Then you can get all kinds of news stories. But you're not in the field of uh, of being I, one who deals well, with the chemically, de- chemically I dependent. I did for a quarter and a half, and then I switched over to the paralegal program. A quarter and a half? You mean a quarter and a half of college, or what? That was going to be your... Uh, future road you were going to take, but then you decided, nah, I don't want to work with these schlubs. Is that how it went or what? <laughs> yeah, I'd rather work for the public defender's office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll probably be reading all the police reports about John John by then. I see. But you still did enough during the month and a half that you were considering going into that field to be able to walk him to the to the right spot. Well, I 4 point would it. All right. She 4.0. Oh, it. Hard, baby, yeah. Hey. 4.0. I have a month and a half work, Terry. No, a quarter She's and a, a half. She's a natural. A quarter and a half. A quarter and a half. About five months. I got it. I understand the concept of a quarter and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really Is funny. your pussy on fire? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> hey, you know, don't you ever come on this airways and ask me if I have a chemistry or whatever the hell you said. Actually, it's not. What do you... Well, go ahead and repeat the I question. I like to go shopping instead. Oh, go ahead and ask the question again, please. Have you been to a chemical dependency treatment program before? Oh, I know. I'm stopping by um, <clears throat> these people at Stoneway, and they have their oh, way to have my pussy gun on fire. Okay. Maybe you should go to the Fremont public um, Fremont uh, meetings there. Oh, the yeah, program. yeah. Give a shout-out to what? Yeah, why don't you send him a brochure there, Sherry? Why don't I you... tell you what, Sherry. He can Sherry. look at the phone book and look it up and get one sent to his house if he wants one. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sherry. Yes? Sherry, listen to me real closely. Oh, jeez. No. And please <laughs> clear out your mother effing chemistry, That's not whatever good you, you want to say to me, okay? That's not good sentence, Why don't you, Robert? You better go get a dictionary. Mm. Or a thesaurus. <laughs> well, well, the question thesaurus, is, yeah. I'm not even... Halfway stand. Thesaurus is another word for thesaurus, Terry. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's probably I halfway tell you. baked. Hey, Sherry. Oh, okay. Let's let's get on to the point. He's not really a druggie, oh, actually, you? Sherry. He's no. just a big drug. I want you to. I want you to come out here to uh, West Seattle, oh, and we're going to represent all people. Be with Alan out there, okay? I have to coordinate with my mom so I could use her car because my other car oh, is in Okay, well, I'm going to be down at 351. John, John, I don't think you're picking up on the signs here. Forget Alan. that, John, John. I think you're oh. missing the signs here. And I think the signs that you are missing out on is that Sherry has certainly been drawn to you. That Sherry is certainly finding something that she's not necessarily alluding to that she finds intriguing about you. Mm. That Sherry. Whether she wants to come on these airwaves or and admit it or not, is into you in a big time sexual way, John John. And well, you're no, not closing the deal. My mother effing did. Wow. You're not closing the deal. I don't think so. I can't take the deal unless she wants to suck my Okay. Oh, I don't boy. think so. <laughs> okay, Sherry. Nice timing. So why so much the concern though, Sherry? I mean if it's you know, if there's no attraction there, oh, why Sherry. I don't know. You guys have my daily entertainment for the last, Cute what, eight years in the morning? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Sherry? Yes? I think you better start realizing what's going on here. What? You love John John. No, no, I love you guys. You want John John. No, thanks. You may, you may love us, but not in the same way. You don't want us sexually like you do John John. I don't think you so. You want to make love <laughs> to John John. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Nice. You want that hot, bad, alcoholic breath all over your chubbed body. I don't think so. Oh, chubbed yeah. body. I don't think so. <laughs> I can too. find that at UCLA. Mm-hmm. Why do you love throwing in your California references? 
Because I work for the real estate office down there. Oh, I see. Family oh, real estate. that's why. Well, well la da. Da. And you're the up here First person to ever live in California. That's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. I live in both places. How old are you, Sherry? 36. Oh, Whoa. it's around that age oh, where you develop little strange attractions, Terry. Yeah. It's I'll around- go to the mall later. And I'm she's go single. Now she's telling John John where to find her. Yeah. What mall might you be going to, Sherry? Northgate. Aha. Uh-huh. And what time might you be in the Northgate Mall, Sherry? Probably between 1 and 3 at Nordstrom. And, oh, now oh. she's even telling us what department store to look for. Big spender. And uh, what uh, might you be wearing so John John could easily pick you out there, Sherry? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Mm-hmm. Nordstrom, her code for Lane Bryant. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Obviously, no. you're a single woman, Sherry. Yes, I Yes, am. it's around that age, Terry. Oh, I was gonna when say. you start getting a little bit warped in the head, you start developing weird attractions, and John John is her boy. <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's too young for me. Promiscu... Uh, he's actually older than you, Sherry. <laughs> yeah. That's, and that's yeah. the only problem with him. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it. Age. He may be too young. Yeah, the age is the only problem. The fris- fish grinder's <laughs> all over my head. Oh, are you saying that the fact that I'm too young for you, I'm actually a little bit older than you, girl. I heard really? you said you're eight. First time, John. Yes, I'm a 59-year-old uh, man. Oh, mm-hmm. really? You're an old pervert? Do you like? Yeah, I like the little woman. Oh. Lunch over 18. Little? Well, now you know where to find her, John John. I'm sure whether she's going to be there or not, John John will be circulating through the Northgate Mall, and aren't they really happy for us? <laughs> Back off your microphone, T-Man. Oh, jeez. You're mumbled. Is that right? Well, yeah, there you go. You Sometimes. certainly you certainly wrote the book on mumbling. I'm after you yeah. there. I'm coming down the station. I'll be there shortly Stop and it. heading out to uh, a little strike zone over in West Seattle. Well, and I'll tell you what, once today. I hit the station, I'll tell you where what I'm going to be at. Sherry? If you want to come out and see me. Yeah, whatever. What was that, Sherry? I've got phone conferences today. Oh, you're a very important woman. Oh, oh, she's uh, talking she's, to people in California, yeah. probably. You got, <laughs> yeah. Boy, it's hot down here. <laughs> you got a lot going on, Sherry. You don't. I got to make money to support my shopping habits. You don't have time for John John. You are so uh, such a big time shopper that you wear only the best. Uh, that old, they wear what? Only the best. No, sometimes I look like a bum. Okay. Wow, those nice are the special ad- days. Admit, but we don't believe it. <laughs> Anyhow. Whatever. Eating, at, eating at Panda Express doesn't really qualify as shopping, by the way. The bottom, <laughs> the bottom line is you are in love with John John, whether you want to admit it or not. And no. maybe you two will, uh, you two soulmates. the checkbook. You two soulmates. Mm, yeah, if there was one, it wouldn't be too big. <laughs> You two soulmates will find each other, I'm sure, later probably today. Probably not. Mm, probably not. <laughs> Sounds like she wants to, Terry. I think so. She, she's trying to play hard. I'll be broadcasting live oh, from a... stop it. An area near you, over in West Seattle. If you don't even care about the I fact know. that there's a finally a woman that yeah. seems remotely into him. Because he's gay. Is that he, what it is? He, yeah, he, he likes gay. guys. Yeah. Like her. He likes guys. Oh, do you know what... St- uh, Steven. <laughs> yes. uh, okay. I mean, Scott... I'm I'm chiefing it up right now, and I'll be down to see you guys shortly. I'll be back right now. John, John, if you come down here, you'll never make it in the building. You know, I have a way to get upstairs. Mm-hmm. Well, John, John, well, I thought you worked and stuff, don't you? I have a job? path to get upstairs, and believe me, I will still be... You know, I'm still hooked on this little strike yeah, zone. And phonics. Uh, Girl wants to come out to the... Area where everybody... Yeah, she's not coming. Anyhow, yeah, what happened to the job you claimed you had a few weeks ago? Well, I'm a union member, and unfortunately, I am... Uh, I no, guess okay. I just gave it away. Uh, yeah, we all know now. Mm-hmm. So he's a concrete worker. Imagine John John being in a union. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pouring a union concrete. with his his alcohol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what he's in union with. <sighs> he didn't... You, the, the really fascinating thing is... For for a number of months, maybe even years, mm-hmm. John John has tried here or there to convince us how into women he is. I know. Here was a woman that she couldn't even really fight it. Right. That she was into John John. And he wasn't remotely interested, would rather hang out with the Teamsters. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. She put it on a platter. 230 shoe department. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Could she have made it any more clear? Could she have put her a, bull jo- a bullseye bigger on her vagina or what? I'm the one squeezing my size 11 into an 8. Mm. <laughs> you'll, you'll know when you see me. <laughs> we would have known anyway. <laughs> the
I had no idea that I was going to be so in love. That was Kate Hudson in 2000, Ooh. gushing about her fiancé, Chris Robinson, and flashing her stunning engagement ring. Let's fast forward to 2006. I want to kill him! Okay. <laughs> That's so sad, Terry, that, to hear the thing she said back before the trouble, Terry, began. Okay. And you would think those are the words of a woman that's going to last a lifetime with a man not even close. I had no idea that I was going to be so in love. That was Kate Hudson in 2000, gushing about her fiancé, Chris Robinson, mm. and flashing her stunning engagement ring. Oh, well, that's what makes you so in love, Terry. You're blinded by the diamond light. Now extras <laughs> uncovering new clues about what may have led to the couple's shocking split. All right. In Touch Magazine reports friends claim the two have been fighting for more than a year. In Touch Magazine's the best tabloid out there, Terry. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. If I'm like at the airport and I need to read what I need to read, I'm not buying The Star, I'm not buying Us Weekly, I'm not buying any of the others, I'm buying In Touch. Yeah. That's the best one. They have definitely stepped it up. Mm, that's what I was trying to say, yeah. In Touch Magazine reports, friends claim the two have been fighting for more than a year. Aww. Senior editor Jared Weisselman says their 13-year age difference and time apart also may have led to the bust up. Chris is turning 40 this year. He's got different priorities than Kate, who's 27 years old. Mm -hmm. So the fighting probably came about from all of these things. Yeah, whatever. You don't know what you're talking about. But uh, good writing on uh, In Touch. Right. Anyhow. <laughs> Well, but... Just sounds like a guy taking a stab in the dark, but uh, sure. that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. But it's sad, because I liked them together, and Is that I liked right? her, and... Well, hey, a little thing, every last can come. Come on, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Isn't that what he sings? Or, uh, yeah, I don't know. Wasn't that their first hit? I don't know any of their songs. It was a long time ago, I'll tell you that. Well, yeah, he's 40, so... Yes. <laughs> been in the business. first hit, Stephen. Well, it was their... It was their breakout main, hit. Main pop hit. Yeah. All right, let's main. argue this for the next four hours. What do you think their first hit was? Jealous. I think it was their first hit. Jealous oh. Again, I think, was their first radio. Oh, Jealous Again, yeah. It yeah. was before Hard Day. How's that go? Give us a couple bars. Because I'm jealous. No, not well, you. Jealous Again. Man, you nailed it. You really did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure no. I did. No, that's how it goes. You could do, uh, you could be start a cover band for him, Stephen. Really? Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Either that or Britney Spears. You take I your pick. I would have to lose a lot of weight to be in that cover band. Oh, wow. No, I'd just be the Fat Crows. <laughs> It's amazing he thinks he has to lose a lot of weight just to be in that band. <laughs> it's called crow's feet. If I was bare naked ladies, I wouldn't have to. That guy's big. So. Nothing else in life inspires him to lose a lot of weight. Right. But if he were to be the lead singer in the cover band of Black Crows, Terry. Oh, boy. He would lose a lot of weight. Right. Coming out of big pun, I'd fit right in. Oh, yeah, geez. you would. But you, don't, you don't punish people. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you do crush a lot. Yes. <laughs> Now, uh, Terry, yes. you started telling me something about Jenna Jameson. It's a did. little too early at the time, but I want to hear about it now. What's the latest? You love your Jenna Jameson well, stories more than even I do. If she's so old school, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously past well, her time has come and gone as far as the porn world, Terry, but you seem to be fixated on Jenna Jameson's <laughs> stories lately. I'm picking up on some trend. You want to talk about that or not? Well, no, I just think, I, I know that even though she, it's past her time and all that, and she's old school, I just thought that you had a little appreciation for her because Well, there's always of... going to be an appreciation for one who carried the torch, right, Terry. Right, right, right. So that's why I guess I get kind of, you know, obsessed with her little stories, and she's been I thrust a... into the news oh, thrust, as yes. of late. I still have a fondness for Animal. Doesn't mean I want to hear stories about her every day, Terry. Uh, well, it has... Didn't she pass no... on? Animal? Didn't she? I think she did. I don't think so. I think it just looked that way because in the, a lot of her pornos, her eyes would like roll to the back of her head and you thought she was dying. Oh, somebody was killing her. It's so gay. Oh, oh, somebody was. Somebody was killing her. Stabbing but, her. But she didn't die. Oh. <laughs> anyway. No, I really think she's dead. Animal. Somebody was killing her, but that was the moments where she lived the most. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. I lived for those moments. See? And you wonder why I bring up Jenna Jam Jameson or any porn kind of reference. Uh, so David, see if Adam Mall <laughs> is still alive. Why. Will you check Adam Mall's yeah. bio on uh, IMDb, please? Yeah, how do you spell it? Just go to Adult Movie Database. Talk. Yes. Oh. Really. She did die. She, she died? Did? Yeah, this Adam year. Mall died? Really? Yeah, I, thought I remember reading that. Sad. What happened? Uh, let's see. 13 inch long. Oh, <laughs> Stabbed she didn't take it anymore. Oh, oh, oh. One too many thrusts. So, uh, Car oh, accident? She, she had surgically enhanced breasts. What a uh, Really? Weird. Crooked she, lower teeth. What? A she died, she died of crooked lower teeth. No, I'm trying to figure out how she died. Oh. Right? I'm on Wikipedia, and you got to read all this crap about her. Okay. Uh -huh. Probably go to the end. She's oh, a dead yeah, woman. You have to know about the crap about oh, her? Oh, so I, I did. I suggested a car accident, because I think... Wow, Terry. 
her husband Hank Armstrong was not involved in the crash. Sounds like you want a prize or something, Terry. I, I mean, I just... Good job. Let's play the new game show called <laughs> How the Porn Star Died. <laughs> Okay, never mind. She was not wearing a seatbelt, so kids, there's a lesson for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, she driving, does it say? It does not. Hmm. God, let's see she it. <laughs> no, I doubt that. Adam Mall, who's taken so many yay long in the Steiner Terry. Oh, oh, isn't it ironic that she dies in a car accident? Oh, man. Women like that shouldn't die in car accidents. Okay. They shouldn't. <laughs> All right. Okay, so back to Jenna Jameson. Wait, Terry, we were just, we were, if you didn't recognize yeah. it. We oh, were, are we doing a moment of silence? We were taking a moment of silence. Oh, I apologize. For the newly departed, it's newly departed as far as we're concerned. Uh, when did she die precisely, Stephen? Uh, January 25th of 2006. The woman's been dead for a good six, seven months now, Terry, and uh, we will take a moment to pay tribute to the great, a porn star to the stars, Animal. Okay, Terry, what do you have there? <laughs> well, there's a new computer game out uh, that lets you have uh, do virtual sex type stuff with oh, a virtual Jenna Jameson. Mm-hmm. So it's like serious hardcore porn. Right. On your computer, you get to hear all the crazy sounds that she makes, and you can Is give it, it to her and oh, all that. I know how, how well, to go about it, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is it available on Xbox 360? Can I use it's, my wireless controller, Terry? It's for oh. your computer, oh, I said. damn. Of course. I have a picture, though. Microsoft wouldn't go that hardcore with uh, with their Xbox 360. Yeah, I have a picture. I want to see it on the big screen. Well, they they say here in the story that uh, virtual Jenna looks about as real as, like, a, you know, virtual Donovan, Donovan McNabb on, you know, your Madden game. Mm-hmm. So. Donovan McNabb looks pretty hot. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So Jenna Jameson looked, uh, must look uh, equally as graphically hot. Is that right? Um, well, like I said, I have a little picture there for you. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess the, the cool thing for you would be that you could actually, like... This is right up the alley of someone like Schwagger Terry, who has <laughs> no experience, or, uh, lest we forget, a pasty David ah. Arthur. Oh, yeah, David Arthur. He has no sexual experiences under his belt in life. He gives you all the reasons under the sun as to why that is, wanting to uh, convince you that it's really the basis of a uh, a religious thing, mm-hmm. that the the bottom, the common denominator of all his reasons boil down to religion and wholesomeness. I have told you for years that is not the case. It is more of a fear, a performance anxiety at this point for him. The fact that he's a 29-year-old man going on 30 with no experience, he doesn't want to all of a sudden delve into a woman around his age and sh- Show her that he really doesn't know which end is up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, this, a pasty David Art, <laughs> is a great situation for you where you can learn on the job. You can learn. You can have a trial and error type moment over and over and over again until you feel like your confidence level is raising, and then you'll be ready for the real thing. Yeah, it's only twenty nine ninety five a month. Twenty nine ninety five a month. However. Steel. There's a three-day trial that only costs nine ninety-five. Nine ninety-five. Oh. Oh. It's better, better. It's a good weekend. It's a good weekend. <laughs> you could you could explore. You could dabble. You could uh, do things and uh, see if it works for virtual Jenna. Don't put that there. Things like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> put that there, but don't put that there. Hey Jenna, do you smoke? Mm-hmm. No? Okay. You could you could play around with Jenna's body in the privacy of your own home. And uh, maybe pick up on a couple of things you want to then take into more real-life situations so you'll be prepared. It's a perfect Christmas gift, right? Well, then give it to her on the, Give and it to her on the old Murphy bed. It's, <laughs> it's Christmas in August. There you oh, go. Yeah. When is it available, Terry? Um, it's available now. I have a couple of the de- the uh, sites that you can get it. So you're telling me it's a uh, video game where you all you do is have sex with Virtual Jenna? Yes. Mm-hmm. To do all the crazy sex things you always wanted to, I guess. Does it come with any special attachments, Terry? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I can I give you the it. website. Hmm. Uh, does it come with a strap on it? Whoa! <laughs> I just am asking for a friend. Do you type in, I'm licking your neck? Huh? Whoa. Oh, I mean, like, do you type in no, like, your... I, I don't know. Do you want the site? You were doing a lot better when oh, you stayed quiet. Oh, are you on the site? Yeah. Well, what does the site say? 
Let's face it, in the last ten years, men and women from around the world have fantasized about effing the world's ultimate sex icon. <laughs> Can you make your voice a little bit deeper when you read this, please? I would like you to reread that and make your voice even deeper. Go ahead, start from the beginning. Let's face it. In the last ten years, men and women from all around the world. Even have though he's now affecting his voice, Terry. Even now he's now trying to put some kind icon. of an effect on his voice. It doesn't sound any deeper than it did before. He doesn't realize that. You should do ads for him. <laughs> you okay, read it. Read it as you normally would. Now read it in your normal voice, and uh, let's hear again what is available for this new, very fascinating game that uh, could be. Yours, ladies and gentlemen, the prophecy of your own home. Go ahead, yes, please. All right, let's face it. In the last ten years, young me or men and women from all around the world have fantasized. Doesn't say young. No, no it doesn't. Sorry. He likes that part. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to add that really bad. Right? It's interesting that you just I somehow know. threw the word young in there. Young, hairless men and women. <laughs> well, it doesn't really say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Go ahead. Um, fantasized about effing the world's ultimate sex icon. Does it say effing or you're editing yourself? I'm editing myself. Okay, you're, you're doing the editing. Go Yes. Hot and beautiful Jenna Jameson. Mm -hmm. That perfect body, that insatiable appetite for sex. <laughs> she can please you with a smile and a wink of an eye. Now, we all know you have never wanted her in person. No. And that. Wait. We yeah. all know you will never have her. You know what? Print, print it out. We'll read it. <laughs> Dave's like, I've never wanted her in person. Because he's throwing in things that aren't there. He's well, stumbling I, on things that are. I don't know how to spell. Blah, 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 blah. Her perfect breast. Her young 13-year-old penis. <laughs> Don't say that either. Hello. I actually also have, um, and maybe we can do this uh, uh, after a break or something, but yes. I, I do have a trailer um, for audio. But we'd have to edit it. Oh, there's a trailer that we yes. can download? Yes. That we can play to, uh, yeah. that will advertise this particular game? Yes, sir. But you do have to edit it. I, I understand <laughs> that it may be a little bit graphic, Terry. Pretty graphic. Oh, pretty much the nuts and bolts of this game are all about mm -hmm. yeah. graphic behaviors. <laughs> Aren't they? Aren't they, Terry? Yeah. Uh huh. I think he should be the voice guy, like for trailers. Oh, just... He'd be great. He's got to be able to read, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can edit him. Yeah, they can edit him. You're right. Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't read the trailers live. You still on the site there, Pasty? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Can't get it off. You're not going anywhere? <laughs> I, I like how she has a little Kill Bill outfit on. She has, like, the Uma look and the little virtual Oh, uh, he's Jenna. loving that, then. It's a nice look. That works. You a big Uma fan? Oh, yeah. Uh, if Quentin Tarantino likes her, then she's good enough for you. <laughs> exactly. Is that how it works he or what? Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge Uma fan, but she's... I, I like the little outfit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's too funny about it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds so uncomfortable yeah, almost reading it's weird, that. Dude. It's triple X. Well, yeah, I would guess. It's for adults only. Mm. It's virtual. Jenna Jameson, welcome to the future, ladies and gentlemen. It's 3D video game sex. Uh-huh. There's no levels as far as this particular game is concerned, <laughs> Terry. There's no ultimate goal. There's no beating the game. There's just beating the subject oh. of the game. Yeah. You get it? Yeah, right, I get yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So do you just type in, like, sniffer armpit or whatever you want to do? I mean. <laughs> yeah, Pasty was a little confused. Uh, no, Pasty, it's pretty much do whatever you want with Jenna, and she'll uh, pretty much uh, conform to your, your wishes. Okay, just checking news. Well, how do you win the game? <laughs> you don't <laughs> win the game there. Uh, pasty, is that Pasty? Yeah. Uh, you don't win, as I was saying. There's no winning. There's no losing. There's no levels. There's well, no... well, shouldn't there be levels of of uh, pleasure for her? I mean, should well, she be able Terry, to? I mean, maybe help you out. If you wanna, yes, go along that line. Then I certainly can't argue that uh, there's probably some things you can do to virtual Jenna that are more pleasurable than other right, things. Right, right. So it's mean... like a blow up doll that Pacey's gonna end up popping. <laughs> Right? I mean, so, like me taking the blowtorch to her ass, it's not a pleasure level thing? Uh, what? He's going to end up popping this thing, right? I mean, if it's a, like a blow up doll, he's going to drill it. It's mm -hmm. not a blow up doll, it's Isn't a it? game. It's a video game. But does it come with a blow up doll or something? You no, just sit there and... you sit at, looking at the computer screen yeah, doing things. It leaves you to unsatisfied, her. I would imagine. Yeah, I'm not finding the just overall wow, that was the most satisfying video game. I, what, beating what? Halo to me is more of an orgasm chair. But, but what is that any different than doing, you know, live chat with somebody? Well, at least you know they're out there. They uh, 
they were there with you mentally. It wasn't some video games program that uh, decided even before you bought it that that was going to be the case. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, At least you, you know the guy you're talking to. Yeah. Breaking, <laughs> breaking down some woman in Toledo, Ohio has its uh, satisfaction to her. Oh, I gotcha. Mm. I gotcha. All right. Planning on meeting her in Sun Valley for the weekend. Yo. <laughs> I just figured that, you know, this would be kind of fun for... Sun won't be shining where we're going, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not in that valley. No, no, no. <laughs> Not in that valley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's something more satisfying about that, I would imagine. But this game certainly oh, is. Yeah. Sorry, Terry, this game is a step in the right direction. Okay. All right. The day is coming where the video game... Allows you to bring home the uh, m- less of a flat screen type of a uh, sensation and more right. of a, a virtual reality, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. The need for sexual partners, human sexual partners, that day is slowly but surely coming to an end. Really? You One day, long after we're gone, Terry, unfortunately, but one day you'll be able to get the same satisfaction. From your virtual lover. From your Apple computer. <laughs> Apple may be the first to the uh, to the finish line there, Terry. But whoever wins the race yeah. is going to have a mince worth of uh, yes, a bottom line cash for their company, Terry. So people will just never go out of their home because you know That's they right. can get everything they need Absolutely. just by sitting. In the sad. day of leaving the home is coming to an end too, Terry. That's everything so you'll ever need is going to be there at your computer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the satisfaction, all the mental stimulation, all the sexual stimulation, all the uh, nutrients, all the uh, food and drink, uh, anything you'll want will be available right at your doorstep. Geez. So not hanging out with girls and staying in my apartment is kind of cutting edge. The pasty it? one day will be very <laughs> invoked. He will be looked upon as the pioneer. Yeah. <laughs> As far as what will be available to those in the future. Yeah. He's the Pied Piper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll all follow. Lead the way, Pied Piper. <laughs> Are you landing, Pasty? Whatever. You're right. <laughs> the T-Man. Drew Barrymore says she is hot for a kid. At 31, the actress says she is now ready. Say Drew Barrymore too, Stephen. Yeah? You and Drew Barrymore, hot for a kid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you have one. Oh, I don't know about that anymore. Anyway. Drew Barrymore says she is hot for a kid. Right. At 31, the actress says she is now ready. Interesting way to put it, Terry. She's hot for a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. She's now ready what? To become a mother. She's oh. been dating the drummer of the band The Strokes for the past couple of years. She says she'll have her own or adopt. The yep. Strokes. Mm-hmm. Weren't they supposed to be the modern-day Rolling Stones? Kind of. They never really just, panned out. People were ready to kind of jump on their bandwagon. Mm-hmm. A little overrated, but, you know. Yes. Have a nice little sound to them, but didn't uh-huh. really pan out the way people thought. Never yes. Does. Never does. Strokes. <laughs> Except that trailer you were talking about, Terry. You mm-hmm. told us in the last segment about the Jenna Jameson video game that is coming soon or is now available, available at a computer near you. Yeah. Where you can have virtual sex with one of the most prolific porn stars of all time. Right. Well, you told us that there was a uh, a little audio trailer available to preview, to advertise that particular video game. And uh, during the break, we worked very diligently, Terry. We worked very hard on uh, downloading this little commercial, if you will, Mm-hmm. On the Jenna Jameson Have Sex With Me video game. <laughs> that's the only goal. That's the only strategy involved. That's the only uh, little thing in, incorporated in playing the Jenna James video game. Virtual sex with her, Terry. Right. There are no free games. There's no extra guy. There's no... Uh, <laughs> Guy. No extra guy. Yeah, you always try to get an extra guy in Pac Man. Oh. Mm-hmm. There's no. Uh, <laughs> Plus, eating the banana. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right, interesting. Fruit that you chose there. You could have chose pear. You could have well, chose. Well, wasn't banana the highest, I thought? Okay, maybe for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you turn blue. Mm. Whoa. Oh. I don't think don't that the was part of the game. blue and they blink? <laughs> okay. And uh, you, you eat the little thing? Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> they don't turn blue. The point okay. is, I downloaded the commercial for the Jenna James video, video game, and here it is. Hey, it's Jenna. Come on, baby, let's play. Mm. Uh, uh, 
you want to get nasty with me? Oh, just, uh, imagine... <laughs> Terry, I was bringing up in the last segment that this game really is needed, especially for someone like Pasty Dave, Terry, who sure. can learn the ropes without having necessarily the embarrassment of showing a woman that at his age he's not sure which end is up. Right. I'm sure Pasty, when he listens to this uh, commercial, when he listens to this advertisement, mm -hmm. is going to have some thoughts as to whether he's going to be a purchaser, whether he's going to be a customer of this video game or not. Right. So let's now turn on the microphone of one of Pasty David Arthur as we play this Jenna Jameson video game, a little trailer. Hey, it's Jenna. Hey, it's me, Dave. Come on, baby, let's play. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Do you want to get nasty with Oh, you? yeah. <laughs> you know, I bet you can't wait to Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while? Yeah. So you, yeah. Talk, you remember the last time in your previous life when you... <laughs> mm -hmm. When you did her? Yeah. <laughs> I do lots of chicks on the computer. Hmm. So this would be nothing new to you then, basically, would it? I'm kind of used to it. I see. <laughs> so you don't need to go out and get this video game, although you can every day have sex with Jenna Jameson on your computer. Uh. This enables you to have sex in a virtual reality almost kind of way with, as I said, one of the most high-profile porn stars of all times. I'm ready. I bet you can't wait to f*** <laughs> you know I can. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but give her a shot. You know, I bet you can't wait to f*** me. Oh, 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 I don't even know which one the real pasty is. Oh, no. Do you know which one the real pasty no, is? No, I don't. Unbelievable. I get so confused. I go to his parents' house for dinner. I say, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you're lucky. And their parents <laughs> never even pick up on no it. No idea. Oh, hey, good. pass the scallop potatoes, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I think they're scallop potatoes. potatoes. There has to be scallop potatoes <laughs> on the table. Oh, yeah, potatoes. and then some potatoes. ham. <laughs> your mom certainly so knows how to... Weird. Your mom is one of the all-time <laughs> potato scallopers, isn't she? Honestly, no. No She's one of the all-time greats. No? Really? Dad's the one that does the cooking. Your dad does the cooking? Oh, yeah. Does he scallop? No, no scallops. He's the mashed potato man. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Garlic. Mash him up, daddy. <laughs> there it is. Okay. <laughs> Throws on the table. All right. Uh. Oh, man. Maybe scallop potatoes is kind of a poor thing. I don't know. I like them. Though. I love scallop potatoes. <laughs> you know, I bet you can't wait to f*** I bet you Jenna Jameson appreciates a good scallop potato, Terry. Oh, she probably does. not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, before we play the rest of this trailer, Terry, I know you're engulfed. Oh, yeah. You mentioned also in the last segment, or somebody did, somebody informed us that Anna Mall is no longer, uh, longer amongst the living, not nearly as highly esteemed as Jenna Jameson was in the trade, Terry, but certainly in my mind, mm -hmm. an all-star... A porn star performer, Terry. Okay. It's like your first girlfriend, right? You mentioned. <laughs> oh, I had many before her. Okay. You mentioned that she passed away in January. Yeah. Well, we did a little bit more research on that during the break, too. Oh, you get us a uh, porn star <laughs> information, information, man. and we will take it to levels beyond. Run with it. I uh, did some homework on the computer there and found out that when she died, she was mm -hmm. driving a Dodge Stratus, and she was working at the time. As a Blue Wing Dales sales little person? counter uh, uh, salesperson, yeah. yes. Wow. Really? Yes. Blue Wing Dales, an East Coast department store kind of thingy. Uh-huh. But you would think, at least I would think, maybe you would think, you would think, after all the hard times she put in as a porn star, Terry. Right. No pun intended. Oh, maybe every pun intended. You would think. After all the battering her vagina took, Terry, that she'd be able to retire after her day was done in the porn industry. Yeah. But no, she had to work at the cosmetics counter or some little area of uh, Bloomingdale's. Can you imagine her at the cosmetic counter here? Let me put some makeup on you and you come out looking like a porn star and you're like, wait a minute. Oh, jeez. Maybe she just wanted a normal life. How many times did she have to tell a customer, no, that's not me. Right. They're thinking of somebody else. Yeah. Would you recognize her, you think? I don't know. She probably has the kind of look that uh, she could easily alter it where maybe someone like me, who worshipped for a time, Terry, uh -huh. the great Adam Mall, wow. wouldn't even recognize her. I'd be like, wait a minute. Can you throw your eyes to the back of your head? <laughs> oh, that is you. <laughs> 
He was working at Bloomingdale's. You would think, after all the ransacking of the Steiner that took place over the years, Terry, that she would have accumulated enough cash that she wouldn't have to go in her dry Dodge Stratus to work at Bloomingdale's when it was all said and done as far as her porn career. Well, maybe she just partied all that money away. <sighs> that is a possibility. She yeah. Snorted a, snorted a lot of that money away, perhaps? Yeah, it could have. Most of them don't really make all that much money, though, do they? Oh, my God. Oh, well, they yeah. work a lot of... Yeah, they don't make uh, as much per movie nearly as any kind of Hollywood star. Well, no. But, but they mean, do. They pump out... What is it? Like a, a good couple grand? A couple of hundred movies in a year or two period. Yeah, it's shocking. It's my first year in the biz. I've been in 180 movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, exactly. Really? Jesus. And it's not like they're being paid minimal wages. I'm just thinking, if you were to look, and I'm sure you are, Stephen, at Adult Movie Finder dot com or something like that. What's it called? Adult Movie Database. Yeah, that's right. That's the one. I have it saved. I don't even nothing to type it in. Uh, you would, you'll see how many movies she's she's done. I'm sure it's a, well above uh, three hundred kind of number, right? Yeah, the story says over three hundred. Mm-hmm. So, so for that, about how much do they get? Page she got like thirty grand a movie. She, she might have been a little like beyond. You know, she kind of missed the whole explosion of porn. You know, oh, well, a, it was like just a, a little before the internet and all that. So okay, I don't think so they make ten thirty grand, grand a movie. Um, what was that? I don't think they make thirty Some grand do. a movie now. They do. Yeah, they do. Some Some they do. They do. I mean, but it's a rare few that you know. It's like this business. There's a rare few that she do was really a headliner. Well and, she well, was the the star of uh, the movie she was in. She wasn't some third scene woman. Well, then still say ten grand a movie. Right still. after those opening credits roll, she's in. That's her. Don't you tell play out of them all. Well, it was, I think it was at a time, like Scott was saying, that it's... Yes, I don't take some perfume for my wife, and... Uh, uh. <laughs> what would you recommend? Mm-hmm. Give me your favorite. <laughs> Driving a Dodge Stratus and working at Bloomingdale's, yeah. Terry. It just seems a little weird. Gosh. Mm. <sighs> Stephen, are you thinking now that you realize how lucrative it can be of getting in the industry? Is that I what you're it, thinking? I think it can be lucrative, but I don't think that it is for everybody. Mm. I think a lot of people get screwed in that business. Oh, uh, no doubt. And uh, more, <laughs> more so than you would think. <laughs> yes. But if you are the headliner, if you're the first scene, because a lot of times you're watching a porno, you don't make it past the first scene, Terry. You know what I'm saying? Okay. She was a first scener every time she was in a movie. Sure. Okay. That's big. Well, for her, I think yes. But I, the majority of the people Well, we're aren't talking her. about her. All right. Okay. I'm talking about her having to work at Bloomingdale's. I'm talking about her driving a dry, Dodge Stratus. That's who I'm talking about. Well, Julie McCoy works at QFC. I mean, you know. Oh, oh that's not even. She doesn't want that to be known, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, she had some sort of a narcotic problem, so she, that explains where her money went. Uh-huh. Well, maybe, you know, Animal had some issues. But now she knows all there is to know about cheese. <laughs> and cutting it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet she oh. can't wait to <laughs> Oh. You're back, huh? Do you? Yeah, like that. You do. Oh, do whatever you want to. Really? Mm. Oh. Put the cigarette oh. on. Hang on. Do you like it? You see? Oh, oh. oh yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. There you go, Terry. If that doesn't entice you to jump on Amazon.com and buy our game, I'm sure it's available on that. <laughs> yeah, Amazon right. sure sells it. Then I don't know what will. No, I think I have the, I, I, we have the website. You won't have trouble finding it. No, sure. I doubt you will. Terry Free has uh, oh, brought to your radios this morning the notion that you can be in possession of the Jenna Jameson virtual reality kind of sex computer game, game, computer yes. sex game. Uh, mm-hmm. Liggity split. Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Pity Q. Thirty bucks a month. How much? Thirty bucks a month. What do you mean thirty bucks a month? That's how much it costs. You have to pay per month. I believe so. You know, just it's not it's not a one time fee like every other game you buy. Um, I don't know. Here, wait, you have to be here. a member. Hey, VTP over there. Could you hand me that piece of paper? Let me see. Oh, I think I dollars a month. Uh huh. Hmm. It's like cheaper than a wife, though. Computerized porn. Oh, there it is. Yeah, twenty nine ninety five a month. What's that all about? Well, hey, if you want to do Jenna in all the ways that you can, you have to pay for well, it. First month, first month is like dinner. You take her out. Yeah. So. Mm. <laughs> You're wooing her, you, you know. Her then- you <laughs> got to talk to her. You have to kiss her at the door before yes. you can really get it. It's a brilliant way for her to make money. Yeah, mm. it is. Kiss her at the back door. 
Whoa, mm -hmm. dude. Not until the 12th month. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you going over your memory, Steve? <laughs> of buying the game? Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. ah. Virtual Jenna Jameson is available nonetheless. Mm -hmm. it may cost you a little bit. But I'm sure it's worth it, right? But for many out there, well worth it. The gift that keeps on a giving. Mm -hmm. And receiving. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, what else is going on, Terry, real quick? Well, I have an interesting Seahawk-related uh, news story for you. All right. Apparently, Chad Eaton's wife has been arrested. All right, hang on to that story, Terry. Wow, with that? Okay. We need time to talk about this, I'm sure. But right now, we have to take a break. Okay. We have to give away uh, tickets to many things we have going on around here. All right. You know Comedy Jam. Everyone's into Comedy Jam. I oh, know I people know. are into it by just uh, how many voicemail messages are left on my phone <laughs> for people wanting tickets. We have the Emerald Downs VIP Pepsi Suite. Woo! That's coming up on Friday the 25th. Mm -hmm. Tickets to give away for that. And uh, what else were, were we've been giving away lately? Uh, the... Uh, uh, to yeah, I card. Yeah. iTunes. <laughs> iTunes, iTunes gift cards. Gift well, we gave cards. a bunch of those away yesterday. Yeah. But, uh, so let me give away some Emerald Downs tickets in a couple of minutes, too. Okay. And then we'll hear about what happened with uh, the guy who took on Sean Alexander last year, Terry, calling him a pussy. Okay. Oh. Because I heard about this story you're about to read. Mm. And it's a little bit ironic, don't you think? Oh. The team leaders in Phoenix, Arizona are serving fake French fries. They're trying to get around the rules against fried food for school right. meals. So mm. they're baking the potatoes. All right, whatever. Stephen does that every night. Uh, <laughs> Terry, you started to tell us some interesting stories that you had on your pile. Mm -hmm. Would you like to continue on with the sharing of the info? What do you have there? I in sure the newsroom of Coob 93. What do you have? Uh, I was telling you about uh, uh, Chad Eaton's wife being arrested on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, she admitted punching him in the nose. A woman leaving... arrested for domestic violence. Yes. 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 She left him with a bloody nose. Bloody nose. She's five foot four, 130 pounds. He is six foot five and 303 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not nearly uh, the kind of massive guy he was when he was on steroids, but uh, he still is a very big guy. Yes. <laughs> and his wife, 5'4", so. 130 pounds, mm -hmm. clenched the fist mm. and wailed at him in the face to the point where his nose got all bloodied. Yes. Mm -hmm. And obviously then he called the cops... Doesn't say my story who called the police. He called the cops. And uh, here now lies the story. Mm hmm. And he had the audacity to go on the airwaves late last season and call Sean Alexander a pussy. Oh, yeah. Basically, call him a pussy, Terry, saying he was scared. Yes. Mm hmm. Sean Alexander, who's on the cover of the Madden game because he's the most accomplished. NFL performer over the past number of seasons, mm -hmm. and Chad Eaton, who barely hung on when he was in the NFL, and then was cut, has the audacity to call Sean Alexander a pussy. Mm -hmm. Sean Alexander's wife ain't punching him in the face. <laughs> no, I doubt that. This is his wife, not his girlfriend, right? No, this is his wife. And, and actually, that's why she she claims she punched him is because uh, she believed that he had been cheating. Ah uh -huh. Who in the Q13 newsroom is uh, getting all flirty with Chad Eaton to the point where his wife has no choice but to punch him in the face? <laughs> I don't know. Who is it? Is it Dan DeBoner? Oh, my gosh. Oh, Wouldn't that be other. something? <laughs> they, do, they need to do a show together. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Oh, the cute. Uh, yeah. What a story. Isn't that amazing? Do you remember last year, Terry, when he was suggesting that uh, Sean Alexander was afraid to play against yes. the Washington Redskins yeah. in the playoff game mm -hmm. and that uh, he wasn't really hurt? He was faking it on the sidelines because he didn't want to take any hits? Yes, do you remember that? Yes, I do. Well, it seems like somebody's taking hits these days. Yeah. And it's not a Sean Alexander. Oh, me schnoz! <laughs> <laughs> Bleeding all over the place. Mm -hmm. I'm calling 911 on you! <laughs> Jeez. So there's a guy who's uh, who's a battered man. Mm. 
Fascinating. Yeah. That's a good thing you didn't strike back. Though. Actually, yes, it is, Stephen. Good thing you brought that up. Oh, because I was actually going to bring that up, but I don't want to bring anything positive. It's yeah. really, I was thinking to myself as I was saying all that, I was saying, what options do you have when your wife strikes you? You can't hit her back. Well, right, because you're the one going to jail. You that's can, what they said here in the You story. can laugh it off, though. If you're bleeding through the nose, that's a pretty solid hit. You're punching her back. He's a bleeder. Oh, He's a bleeder. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, they said um, the sheriff's department... He couldn't laugh it off. He was in such danger. He had to call 911, Stephen. Danger. From the five foot 4 130-pound no. woman? Well, maybe it's something that's uh, a history of a... Uh, she has a history of this kind of a problem, and he wants it to... Yes, and he was afraid it might continue. He needed protection. He wants to get her help. He needed help. It's probably the way to get her help. Too. Yes. Well, you can get her help without calling 911, you know. You only call 911 if there's an immediate threat. But maybe they've tried to go to counseling or something before, and she's rejected those so thoughts. So there's no need to tell 911 operators about it. Well, you got to hit rock bottom before you can climb back up. <laughs> I'm just wondering why a man who's uh, such the tough-ass lineman feels so endangered that he had to call 911. Fine, you're all right that uh, he did the right thing by not hitting her back. You're yes. all you're all correct in, yes. in that because that would have gotten him in a lot bigger trouble yes. than he's just in right now, just being uh, terribly embarrassed, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, he's perfectly within his right after she hits him in the nose if he wants to to leave her. You don't need to be sitting around with a woman who's punching you in the face all the time. Right, right. But why call 911? And have I thought arrested? Sean Alexander was the pussy. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's looking at fourth degree, ass fourth degree assault, a assault. misdemeanor. Punishable. Did I explain it wrong? Is that it? No, boss, you didn't. Th this is the conversation they had in their house, Terry. <laughs> you boys know that. This is Why his wife. working as a bartender? This is his wife talking here, yeah. He's my only sister's son. That's right. He's, he's and if he doesn't have me, yeah. who's he got? <laughs> and if I'm not there, you're there. She sounds kind of tough, doesn't she? Yes, yeah, she does. I'll let you go, Jimmy. Mm hmm <laughs> Jimmy. Well... That's what she calls uh, Chad. Boys, oh, she she doesn't like the name Chad. She can't look him in, a, in the face and call him Chad. One of you wants to say, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, boss. Wow. I'm sorry, boss. I believe you, Tinker. Tinker? Uh, don't ask me who Tinker is in their oh, whole yeah. Connor, somehow I don't believe you. Mm. Now, you better try it again. Because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a man who's untruthful. That's I'm right, sorry, Chad. boss. That's one thing that disgusts me. It's a man who can't admit when he's wrong. Mm. I swear to God. She's telling you, Chad. You disgust me, O'Connor. You want to know why you disgust me? Oh, why, boss. <laughs> Because you're a bleeder. Oh, I hate bleeders. That's exactly how it sounded, too, probably. Mm -hmm. oh. That's a good shot to the yeah. good shot to the face, Terry. She oh, got in there. Man. It's a great 80s punch sound effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Awesome. <laughs> I think Tink Tinker's DeBoner and uh, O'Connor is uh, New York video. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got it figured out. Hey, Chad, how would you know? Is it okay? <laughs> it looked a little fallen. Well, I'm going to go out and get something to eat and make you feel better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would work for me. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, I just find it very ironic. <laughs> the man who was looking in the camera and calling Sean Alexander such a big pussy, no, Terry, I remember that. has Absolutely. to call 911 for uh, a little protection from his wife. Well, you know, I guess maybe the way he looked at it is better uh, her going to jail than him because, you know, he's got such a thriving career. Why did either TV? have to go? to jail why couldn't he just have said you know that's that end of story because he looked at her and said bitch thanks for giving me a bloody nose i'm mm -hmm. gonna make you pay wow well that's really I interesting i mean you so know you, so you you'd laugh it off you'd go ha, that's so funny i'd laugh it off and if i thought it was going to be a consistent pattern of uh, being uh, one who gets hit in the face all the time i'd say you know what i gotta cut my losses here and move on with my life but i ain't calling 911 help me you gotta kill me <laughs> My nose is bleeding. They found him locked in the bathroom, shivering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I please? And I'm not the one calling uh, Sean Alexander, who is certainly far from a pussy, a pussy by saying he's afraid to go in games. That's not me. That's him. And he's calling 911. She may hit me again. Mm. <sighs> It'd be, be hard to not punch her back, though. Well, it would Someone be. Someone punches you in the face, uh -huh. makes you bleed. Would you no. have called nine one one or would you I'll have left? Your back. Oh okay. wow! Well, make sure to destroy the tape. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to worry yeah, about it with my wife. Luckily, but if someone punches you in the face, it's tough well. not to strike back. Your wife has no. Uh, any kind of potential whatsoever of punching you in the face for she, any reason? She would have done it by now, I think. If she had it in her. Plenty of reasons. Well, there's built-up fury probably at some point, I would think. Yeah. Oh, you never know. She's going to unleash. Yeah. Uh, Stephen is suggesting, don't underestimate the 
ev- never-ending fury that's uh, simmering beneath the surface that your wife must have going on. Yeah, she probably poisoned me before she punches me. <laughs> She's a little more passive-aggressive. <laughs> Cyanide in my oatmeal. That would be good. <laughs> good way to go. Yeah. I always eat oatmeal at home, too, by the way. Yeah, no kidding. What a story, Terry. That is, that is very interesting. Yes. So, yeah. Can't wait to see him uh, doing the pre- and post-game uh, reports, Terry. I know. <laughs> With the cotton balls in his nose. Oh, man. <laughs> that is going to be quite the interesting a ratings a grabber. Well, now that she's been arrested and everything, there mm-hmm. I mean, they can't have any contact. There's a no contact order because she's been arrested. Oh, that, that, it kind of goes automatic. Unbelievable. See, even if someone did, if even if I was, a, was with a woman who punched me in the face, mm-hmm. I'd be afraid to call 911 because usually they take the guy away anyway. Mm-hmm. But but obviously you do that to yourself. He, he was <laughs> self inflicted to cover it up. Yeah, Man. she had nothing on her, and he was bleeding from the nose. All right, so he kept the, the blood going no, so he could I, prove I, his point. Yes, I, I don't know. He has to explain to the nine one one operator. Yeah, that Chad Eaton. Okay, just get over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll give you my autograph later. <laughs> Unbelievable! Yeah, and you hear OJ screaming in the background. <laughs> Another happy Wazoo couple, huh? Oh, now. <laughs> Jeez. one 663 t man is the number to call. I know everyone's on the line to try to win tickets right now, but uh, yeah. I'm not necessarily ready to give them away just yet. I want to hear uh, people talk about other things that may be on their mind at this time. There's a lot going on, apparently. From six foot four, 300-pound men running from their wives. <laughs> Moments after, they called... Uh, all pro running back, a coward. I just find it very interesting, Terry. You're on the air. Hello. Hi. Yes, hi. This is Heather. question for you. Is this, this is he- Heather. Hi, Heather. Hi. How are you, love? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Good. My nose is just fine. There's no blood to be found anywhere, and uh, things are great. Yes. Well, that's a positive day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all it takes for a positive day. Yeah. <laughs> Just stay clear of the bloody noses of the world. <laughs> Go ahead, Heather. What's up? Well, I had a question about the new Jenna game. Oh, you're kind of intrigued, aren't you? Well, I, I was wondering if your diligent study oh. of the game, yes. if you were able to discover whether or not they actually state it's capable of being played with one hand. Oh! Well, it should be a hands-free version if, uh, <laughs> if you're really going to get at it, right? Right, well, yeah, that this is have a, to be voice-operated. This is a it. hands-free world now, Terry, at least uh, for most things <laughs> that you may want to go about a particular day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd have to get that information to you. Uh, I don't have it at this time. I know this is something that you want an accurate answer to because it seems like it's very important to you. Well, I would think that you're a hands-on kind of woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's good to know, and uh, we could find that out for you, I'm sure. All right? All right. Okay. Take care. Didn't you have some stat you were telling me about about that ties in perfectly with this very horny caller, Terry? Yes, actually, I do have what a stat. What was that that you started telling us about? Uh, a, according to a recent poll, 20% of Christian uh, women and 50% of Christian men say they're addicted to porn. 20% of Christian women? Yes. Ah, they're the worst, Terry. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. One out of five. Yeah. Addicted to porn. Mm -hmm. Women. Yes. That's weird because I've uh, known an occasional woman that's maybe willing to watch porn. But to think out there that there could be women addicted to porn, and not only could be, but in such uh, heavy numbers that it's one out of five women addicted to porn, that's that's a bit startling, Terry. Yeah. A woman addicted to porn? A woman addicted to porn. What that the is, hell that could is, be going on with these Christian women? Their husbands just dead ass stiffs, not giving it to them, Terry, to the point where they have to put in the the DVD to watch Nick East go to town again. Wow. Oh, Nick East, also working at Bloomingdale's <laughs> and driving a Dodge Stratus. Uh, maybe so. Maybe that is. Maybe Nick you know. It's going to be Nick East uh-huh. Uh-huh. because they say that uh, the definition. I'm sure we all know it is, but just for more clarification, if need be, the definition of a addiction, of is, an addiction? is defined as using porn on an uh, ongoing basis as being addicted to porn. Well, what's so an using, ongoing basis? Fine. Yeah. What's the definition of an ongoing basis? Every day. Because by that definition, I could be a porn addict. 
I watch porn on an ongoing basis, but like, how ongoing is ongoing? Like, do you ever, like, uh, I mean, I would guess what, daily for hours? Daily for hours? Yeah. No, there'll come a point where there's no more of a need for me to continue on with the porn that I was watching. Well, Terry. I think that with any... It's time for cleanup. Wow. I can't believe I just did that. Well, but I think when it comes to... <laughs> didn't even shut the shades. The walk of shame in the bathroom. like this. <laughs> Jeez, you guys, I don't need to know that. Mm-hmm. But I think, you the know... walk to the bathroom with your pants around your ankle. Oh, what? yeah. I hope no one rings the doorbell. Yeah. Hey, when's my wife going back to work? Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the summer's really cramping my style. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, the other day, I'm having that exact moment where I'm figuring I'm all alone. It's the perfect time for it. Yeah. I'm like right at the point of no return. I hear the garage door oh, just start not, going up. Oh, good. That's a real tricky area. My wife holding her son, my son, her son, and her arms coming through the door. Terry. Pregnant with another one. Right. How long do you figure you have when you, once you, hit, once you hear the garage door hit? I just put it this way. I made it. <laughs> just under the wire. I spread it to the finish line. I made it. It's just a fraction of a second to spare. Why is your face flushed? <laughs> it's a hot day, honey. <laughs> At least the garage door. Not to, you. not to mention the hotness I see in you as you walk through the door. Aww. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> don't punch me in the face! <laughs> I'm just <laughs> thankful that you don't do that to me. Does she does she have it in her, do you think? Uh, she's more of a thrower kind of thing if she ever gets mad, but that hasn't happened for like a long time now. Oh, she I, you uh, she's over she's overdue to throw something. Oh, like really? she's thrown like a toothpaste toothpaste tube or something oh, like that. Okay, but yeah. but as far as no, physic no. No physical contact. She wouldn't dare. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. She knows that you would call nine one one. Well, actually, maybe she has, like, but not a closed fist. Like, she'll smack me or something, you know, but I need to be smacked. Which is, like, all the time. Right. <laughs> yeah, but just, you know, punching someone in the face with a fist in the punching nose. Punching someone in the face to the point where the nose starts bleeding. That's a little much. Is a tad much. I mean, was he bending down to... Punch I mean, it. you just kind of wonder mm. how she connected. The there. And that's oh, the whole... Yeah. <laughs> when is my turn? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, he's a whole foot taller. I mean, you know. Kevin, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, Hello? Yes, Kevin. Turn your radio down, please. Oh, my bad. What's up, bud? Uh, nothing. I just want to make a comment about that. You know, getting punched getting punch in the nose. I mean, yes. Granted, Granted, a man can't hit a woman back, but he can shake the hell out of her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily you know I mean? true. To bring, the common, to bring the common sense back back into her. You can shake the hell out of her as long as it doesn't leave a mark? That's your thinking? Yeah, it won't, mm. won't, won't leave a mark. Right. But at the same time, it'll let her know. Okay. Hey, I'm stronger than you. All right, we can't say that on the air. But, uh, My bad. Sorry about I that. I understand. But Kevin wants the men to know they do have some recourse. <laughs> I don't know if he's necessarily leading you down the right avenue here, but uh, according to Kevin, as long as you, you don't punch the nose to the point where your nose bleeds, you are more than uh, okay with shaking the hell out of her. I don't uh, know if that keeps you out of harm's way as far as the law is concerned, Terry. Well, like you it's said, it's all no, about the law when it comes down no, to these things. No marks, and you're cool. Mm-hmm. You're in. Mm. No bruising, no real marks, but a fingerprint on the shoulder is going to do you in there, dude. Yeah, it will. <laughs> we matched up your prints. We dusted her shoulder. You're in trouble. Pillow over the face doesn't show up at the crime lab. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, I mean, that's <laughs> true. That's what uh, Scott Peterson thought. <laughs> well, he's checking the tides, too. <laughs> Doing help. some hard a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chad. Mm. Yeah, such the perfect nose <laughs> oh, for TV. Yeah. Yeah. You may have to join us on the radio side now. <laughs> oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> wow, five foot four, 130 pounds, Terry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, Bam! Right, I mean, right his nose. I mean he's so much Bastard. taller. I mean, how the, you know, are you jumping up? Are you bending down? She just throws a good right cross, I, I Terry. I guess so. Let me get the step stool. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. get over here, you big old lug. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Juan is on the air this morning. Good morning, Juan. Morning, you, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Okay, then. What can we do for you to, today, sir? Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, he probably didn't hit her because he wanted to get in trouble. 
Because uh, and that was I, the correct thinking. He would have gotten in trouble if he would have hit her back. But I just wonder why, after calling Sean Alexander a pussy and a coward, basically for in his mind being afraid to go back in that playoff game against the Washington Redskins, he felt so endangered that he had to call the emergency phone number that we all know as nine one one to get him out of harm's way. That's what I want to know. Uh, well, I wasn't commenting on that. I'm commenting, actually. Well, I'm commenting on that. Yeah. <laughs> Give me an answer okay. to that, Juan. What do you got? Somebody uh, answer me as to why he had to call 911 when he's such the guy able to spot a coward in Sean Alexander. Right. right. Somebody answer me. I don't think he's a coward just because he's smart enough not to go to jail. Hey, I'm not saying he didn't make the uh, incorrect move by not hitting back. That was a bright move for a man who wants to keep his future on the right path. But you're you're wondering I'm why just, the phone call. There's, there's, you can not hit back and still not call 911 right. at the same time. Right. You can not hit back, walk away, leave, for leave a couple the hours. situation, yeah. not feel like you're endangered. And not call 911. Please help me. Somebody come to my rescue. Where's the cavalry? I need help. Anyone know Sean Alexander's number? Maybe he can protect me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to know. Maybe he knows he's violent and he was going to do something, so he called 911 to pr protect them if you both. You know you're violent. You know you're maybe in a situation where you uh, could do something. You walk away, you get yourself out of there, and. And then if you, as I said, feel the need to move on with your life, that's, that's a decision you can make. But calling the emergency number, I need some assistance immediately. Save it for real emergencies, right? Wow. Are you on fire? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Hang up. Are you about to die? Hmm. And I may not, I absolutely would not, actually, mm -hmm. be having this kind of moment that I'm having, Terry, if he didn't go out of his way to call out Sean Alexander the way he did, Terry. Yeah, he did. And remember at the time, Terry, you will recall that I told him on the air how way off he was even back then about his comments. Yeah, I remember you going off on that, yeah. Who is he calling Sean Alexander a pussy? Yep. Most productive player in the NFL for who knows how long now, Terry. And everyone's first pick in your fantasy football drafts for 2006. When is that? I can't wait. I know. <laughs> I'm going to pick Chad Eaton, too. Mm. Oh. I'm gonna put him on my team. Mm, he win. He win the bloody nose category. Yes. <laughs> he can take a real hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Myron, you're on the air. Hey, T, how's it going? Good, sir. How are you? Pretty good. I'm just a little curious. You're kind of going a little about false information. You don't even know who called the cops. Well, actually, that is true. We don't yeah, know. We don't. I'm assuming that uh, it wasn't the housekeeper. <laughs> I'm assuming it wasn't. Uh, there is a possibility and that a neighbor heard called. something. Or... I doubt it. I, I well, really doubt you it. never know. I will be the first to stand up and correct myself if a further report comes out that says a neighbor was the one that called 911. Although he was under the bed calling the neighbor. Call 911. Right. <laughs> Get her off me. Oh. I have a very strong feeling of how this shook down. Well, she the, punched him in the nose. He got on the phone and called 911 and got the authorities out there. The other thing, too, that could have happened mm -hmm. is she may have hit him and then trying to get him in trouble called herself and said, you know, hey, this we're, we're having a dispute, da da da, da. And when... When but the if she's arrived, the one who calls, usually it's not then her being uh, put in the squad car. Well, and, that's true, but not. I mean, if he still has blood on his nose and there's no marks on her, and they they separate them and they say, "Okay, give me your side," and and then she admits, "Yeah, I did. I punched him." Terry, would just give me a moment here to get even with the guy who took on Sean. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> sorry. Right. But in fairness. If the story turns out to be more along the lines of what uh, the last caller and you uh, are suggesting here, I will back off on my stance. But until then, it's open season! <laughs> <laughs> At least you gotta, like, duck, you know, and dodge the punch. I mean, that's, yeah! that's embarrassing yeah, enough. You know. She, she actually, was so quick. Ray Lynn. She you got actually, a slip and hook, slip and hook. <laughs> Bob and Weave, Chad. Bob and Weave. Should have had Kevin Rooney in his corner. Where's your Kevin? Get him, man. Well, the man is down. Yes, Ray Lynn. 
Hi, I'm calling about the Chad Eaton thing. Yes, we've heard something about it, yes. <laughs> well, I'm calling because I think that he, the reason why he made that phone call is not because he was fearful of his wife, but he was being revengeful against her mm-hmm. to prove her a lesson not to, you know, um, take actions to hit him and stuff like that. Don't hit the big man mm. or you're going down. I'm going 5 <laughs> yeah, On your ass. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you're going to jail. <laughs> She's like, yeah, go ahead. Call. You won't do it. (laughs) (sighs) That was great. Mike? Yes, Mike? Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, maybe he was doing it for legal reasons, also, like, uh, in the fact of, like, spousal abuse. That way, when... So it's on the record. Yeah, we all understand these are all possibilities, but don't you all feel a nice moment here for a guy who... (laughs) Uh, took a shot at Sean Alexander during the playoffs last year that he got punched in the nose by his five foot four, hundred thirty pound wife. Can't you all just please? <laughs> what you please? Oh, team, I think you're off on this one. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> that is a cool twist, Ted. <laughs> yes, Ted. Yeah, I was going to comment the same thing, uh, T Man. I think you're wrong on that one. It is probably... Uh, Whatever. The guy was scared. He's running from his wife. End of story. <laughs> okay. He's blocking it. Jason! Well, the fact that, that it actually made the news and it's yeah. in public eye is... I mean, All these Wazoo fans call it in, Terry. <laughs> That's yeah. our boy! Remember Chad from back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Jason. Man, I'm with you, T-Man. Chad Eaton is a pussy. Oh! I didn't say that necessarily. All I said was it's an interesting twist from a guy who called... Sean a pussy to be calling nine one one when he gets punched in the face by his little dainty wife. Yeah. <laughs> how many dainty. how many steroids does he have to take before he doesn't have to call nine one one on his wife? Oh. Wow. Uh huh. I don't like I'll him tell that. you I'll tell you that one after I tell you how many uh steroid guys it takes to screw in a light bulb. So uh <laughs> I got a couple to figure out before that one. Uh huh. Jeez. <laughs> Rob, your turn. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, to you. <laughs> hey, I just have a comment here, you know. If a woman came up to me and slapped me without any proof, thinking I cheated on her, I'd mm. grab a towel, wrap it around my hand, hit her anywhere, uh, up oh, the face, and it now. won't leave a mark. Right, Terry's very sensitive to these things. That, that's not, not true, dude. That, that a towel wouldn't leave a mark? Yeah. So much you, you, you? you can still get bruised. <laughs> Let's try it. Mm-hmm. I'd take a towel and wrap it up and snap her with it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an ass. Snap her in the anus. Whoa! Whoa. Mm-hmm. Matt! Where'd you get the story, by the way? Is it another local paper story? Mm, yes. I wonder if Q13 reported on it. Mm. <laughs> Probably not, huh? <laughs> Matt, you're on. Got from hey, King how you County doing? Journal. What's up, Matt? Not much, dude. I just think uh, Chad Eden needs to grow up because he's going to have a little, little lady knock him down. He probably shouldn't be playing football. No, he's not anymore because no one will let him. But <laughs> well, wasn't he hurt all the time too? Playing when he got—I mean, mm. Umi he's shoulder. A bleeder, Terry. Yeah, he is a bleeder. <laughs> Every time he got hit, Mike. Gosh, you hit it right on the head. He is a pussy. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I agree with Chad calling the cops. Mm-hmm. Haven't, haven't been there. Haven't done that. You've been a battered husband. I've been. I was hit twice. Did not call the cops either time. When I got a divorce a couple of years ago, my attorney and the judge said, "Had I called the cops." I would have been in a much different position coming out of it. I don't know. As I said earlier, if that happened to me, mm-hmm. okay, I would feel leery in calling the cops because a lot of times those situations get twisted. Before right. you know it, you're the one who got hit. You're the one who called the cops, and yet you're the one being taken in the squad car. Right. Well, if you've done nothing, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. Well, you never know. Oh. Hey, it's he said, well, she said yeah. a lot of those times. For a woman who's capable of hitting you, she's certainly capable of twisting the story. Yeah, probably true. Right. And a that's lot of women I, do. That that's is That's why true. I just get myself out and deal with it as I see fit from that point forward. Mm-hmm. Maybe now with the police report, he doesn't have to give half when he gets divorced. Oh, maybe that I is I don't it. think that's the case. Really? I still think uh, maybe that's what he was thinking. Do they have, I wonder if they have kids and stuff because if, I mean, that could come into play if, if they do get divorced and have a custody battle. Uh-huh. Because she's got a violent temper, yada, yada, yada. Can we see the story, by the way? Beat your kid like you do me. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Story, uh, fresh off the AP this morning. Is it this morning you got this, Terry? I, I did. It's from the King County Journal. Mm, at 5.46 a.m. this was printed. The wife of former Seattle Seahawks tackle, Chad Eaton, 
has been arrested. For investigation of domestic violence. Five foot four, one hundred and thirty pound Tina Eaton. Look out! She's coming. <laughs> was arrested Sunday after she admitted punching her husband, leaving him with a bloody nose. What a she goes by Tina the Giant sometimes. <laughs> Eaton stands six foot five. Oh man! <laughs> and is currently at three hundred and three pounds. And in this corner. <laughs> <laughs> According to documents filed in court, his wife told deputies she punched Eaton because she believed he had been cheating on her with another a woman. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and this is supposedly the first one? Eaton's wife remains <laughs> under investigation for fourth-degree assault, a misdemeanor punishable up to uh, by up to a year in jail. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Back after these words. The but you, O'Connor, somehow I don't believe you. Now you better try it again. Because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a man who's untruthful. I'm sorry, boss. If there's one thing that disgusts me, it's a man who can't admit when he's wrong. Right. I swear to God, boss, I'm sorry. You disgust me, O'Connor. You want to know why too, you yeah. disgust me? No, why, boss? Because <laughs> you're a bleeder. I hate bleeders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mm. then. Then we won't be a bleeder. That would disgust anyone, Terry, wouldn't it? Yes. Damn it. No bleeders. tolerance for bladers. No tolerance. Tomato can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, Terry, what else is going on on your pile of old stuff this morning besides the breaking news uh, items that you gave us over the day? What else uh, do you have I'm not there? sure if you knew this or not, but uh, redheads apparently have more sex than both blondes and brunettes. Mm, that's according to who? Well, according uh, to Eric Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's hot. Dirty Harry, get over here. <laughs> Actually, according to a... Uh, a good one. <laughs> oh, gee. A sex researcher and professor. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Well, I believe him. He sounds like he's qualified. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what else? What else is happening to you? Redheads have more of a... Well, I guess so. Jeez. With mm-hmm. their fiery pubes. Yeah, just and not just, life. But. And just to let you know, according also to uh, a study, when women do Sorry. dye their hair red, it means that they're unhappy and they're looking for something new. Oh. Something better. I think that uh, is Psychology 101. Yeah, it's not that hard to break down. So if I come in with red hair, you know there's trouble. (laughs) Have you considered going a little uh, Auburn Filipino little style? No, no. She just lives there. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's as she's going to get. Right. That is. I wonder how you would look as an Auburn Asian. (laughs) Well, I've seen other Auburn Asians, and they don't look good. (laughs) Dairy-free in Auburn Asian. I beg to differ, Terry. I like blonde. I like red. You like blonde? You mean uh, uh, blonde Asians. Blonde Asians. Come on. Not good. Oh, that's where you're wrong. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Nothing hotter than a blonde Asian. The burning bush has spoken. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just plaster on some straw in my hair and we'll look fine. Oh, then we're doing a dance, baby. (laughs) What else? What else is happening? Apparently the Ohio high school where 13.3% of the female students are pregnant. Oh, geez. (laughs) 13.3% of the students? Yeah. Have decided uh, that it needs to change its sex education curriculum. Yeah, maybe just a For this year. (laughs) Or start one. No, actually, they had one in place. It was the Bush administration one. Oh, there, geez. wow, Stephen, wow, not working. Thirteen point three percent of the no, girls in that school are uh, are pregnant. Mm-hmm. You know how you normally have the uh, the kids in school cover their books. Yes. With book covers, right, right. And uh, do you do that? You do that? Well, they still have them. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. Should have the students cover their work. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so. Forget the books. It's called Timken High School in Canton, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Jeez. They have any of their MySpaces? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sick, <laughs> man. <laughs> Dan, you're on the air this morning. Hello. Thanks for uh, calling uh, the program. Thank you, T-Man. I think that's the reason why Chad Eaton called the cops. Everyone wants to talk about this now, I Terry. know they do. Everyone has their thoughts. <laughs> I only brought it up, and I've made it very clear now. I wouldn't even have brought it up, Terry, if he didn't go on the record being so adamant of how Sean Alexander was such a coward. Right. All right? Mm-hmm. I just find it as a little bit of an interesting twist to add on to that little bit of a saga. Okay? Mm-hmm. End the story. Go ahead, Sean. Or Dan, whatever your name is. So, so, so I agree as far as the Sean Alexander comment, but so about 12 years ago, my ex-wife decided she's going to start slapping on me and 
scraping down my back with their fingernails, which under different circumstances be a thing. Yes, but. We, we can break that down. We understand. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. yeah. we know, well, you, give her, you give her no choice but to do that when you're a brain or the ruckus says <laughs> only you can do there, Dan. Yeah, Dan. <laughs> That's why she calls you Dynamo Dan. Wow. And go ahead, Dan. So before all this starts, she hides my keys. She hides this your keys? It's all going on. So for her safety as well as mine, I had to call the cops because it was either call the cops and get my keys so I could leave or I was going to reach the point where I was going to have to start hitting was it Was it the, the destination that you were looking to go to that she had a problem with? What was the point of her uh, hiding your keys? She wanted you to be there so badly? See, I've uh, had you on the line now for less than a minute and I want you gone. Well, the she question- wanted to argue. She wanted. She just wanted to argue. Sometimes yeah. women just want to argue, is what Dan is basically right, saying. Which is to true for I mean, no good reason. Right. They're yeah. just in the mood to have an argument. Right, right. It's what you do? But but why couldn't you have like walked? Like oh. around the block? I mean, do you need your car? He didn't want to go around the block, Terry. He wanted to go. I'm not. I wanted to leave the, the situation, and she would not let. Me. Well, you can leave the situation without a car. Come on. Walk out the front door and keep on walking down the road for a while. And then she follows you down the street, and so all the neighbors didn't... get involved then, and you're, she's slapping you on the back of the head as you're trying to walk away. It looks a little embarrassing, Terry. You're best off getting in the car, shutting the door. Sh- if her fingers get caught in the door, that's oh, her problem, geez. and then you just pull it out of the driveway. Full throttle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Full throttle. Her hanging there. But as far as your comment, man usually gets in trouble. You're exactly right. Yeah, as soon as when the cops got there, they slammed me against the wall. The cops says, what the hell happened to you? And I'm like, I'm the one that called you. <laughs> what are you talking See, about? See, that's what I said. That I was true. leery of. That's, that's the dangerous uh, aspect of calling the cops, whether it's completely not your fault or, or what. Mm-hmm. That's so, that's why the best thing is get in the car, peel out, whether she's hanging on the roof or not. It's, <laughs> she's the one who made this situation because she had to argue. Damn her. <laughs> Because women are such great arguers. God, they love it. That's just my comment. I had to call and let you know. Sometimes there's extenuating circumstances. Yes, extenuating. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Chris! You've made it. Chris, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How are you, sir? What was that? I said, good. How are you, sir? I said it real fast. Hello? Chris, Chris is completely lost now. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> yes. Nobody, Chris? Nobody cares yeah. about how I feel. Uh, go ahead. What's up? <laughs> uh, I just wanted to comment on the Chad Eaton thing. I do agree with you. I think it is a pussy thing to do. I didn't necessarily say it's a pussy thing to do. I just say it's an interesting thing for a guy who's so quick to call someone a pussy in the uh, when uh, we're talking about greatness, when you're talking about Sean Alexander. Mm-hmm. It's right. it's an he's interesting thing. Record. He's the league MVP. He's got the most touchdowns. Mm-hmm. You no know, rushing title. He Obviously, gets one the injury. The guy good. really, Sean Alexander, has never really even been injured his whole career. Mm-hmm. Got hot chisel right. over there knocking on wood. <laughs> never even been injured his whole career. You can't even give him the benefit of the doubt when he gets uh, a concussion. You have to go call him a coward and a pussy, basically, being afraid to get back in the game were the words he used, Terry. Mm-hmm. I just find right. that a little bit ironic. The man was so quick. To make this unbelievable judgment on Sean Alexander, called 911 when he got punched in the nose when he saw there was blood leaving his schnoz and uh, had to have the authorities come in and take care of the situation. Mm hmm. I agree. Completely with you. I believe it. I thought it was a push move. Smart financially wise or whatever reason you want to go to jail or get arrested before the season, but I think it was a push Before the move. season, he's not playing. I know. He doesn't yeah, what does he play. care? Yeah. Well, you know, it, the it's common... got the chair warm next to Dan's right, boner chair. Right, right, oh, right. Yeah, That's the whole sure thing. the chair is very warm. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, hot shots over there. Oh, yeah, the warmest. <laughs> mm-hmm. The T-Man. Hey, yo. Uh, Terry, text page is rolling at 97373. 73, don't you know? That's 97373. 73. Let me read a couple of these, then back to the phones okay. we shall go. At one eight six 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 three, to man. That's one eight six 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 three to man. That is a toll free, a to man number. By the way, uh, let's see what we have here. Well, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. That's right. Let's see what we have here as far as text pages. Somebody writes. Does that mean Terry's married to Judo? T man, don't you jinx Sean Alexander. All right. Well, don't worry. 
the John Madden video game did that for us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see what else we have here. 847, 49 seconds. Terry Free would look so sexy as a redhead. Would you just be shocked if oh. I came in all auburn out? Mm. Red's different than auburn, though. I mean, you got to go red. No, no, no. no. You got to go deep, dark, no. candy apple red? No. Uh, fire truck red. <laughs> you got to go fire truck red, Terry? You got to go auburn, a dark. I guess auburn would be the darker, more uh, yeah. purplish platinum. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyhow. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else we got here. No, I know a slim white girl who thinks every guy wants her. That's not leaving any guy out. She thinks every guy wants her. Want to see pictures of her T-Man? Uh, of course. You know, I do. If, if you said, T-Man, I know this kind of hot girl that, like, two guys want. T-Man, do you want to see pictures? Of course. You know, I do. So send them off. Send them in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chad's wife hit him because she caught him picking up Schwagger's mom with a ten dollar bill. Uh, wow! Whoa! Team man, please punch Terry in the stomach or on the back of the head, please. Why? If that happened to me, as far as being punched in the face by my wife, I'd say snatch, get back in the kitchen, and bake me a pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. terrible. Sure, let's put them both on and see if he says it. Mm. What kind of pie do you think? She oh, jeez, Stephen. <laughs> she Mike Tyson punched his ass, you know, like the game team in. I never played Mike Tyson. Oh, on, I love uh, it. Oh, is there a Mike Tyson? It's like a little guy punching at Mike Tyson. Right in my day? wheelhouse. Yeah, he's a little guy. Mm-hmm. If you, and if you want the code to get right to Tyson and skip everybody, it's zero zero seven three seven three five nine six three. You know, you're about, <laughs> you're about 15 years late on that. People having interest for that code. Yes. But that's okay. I'm easily 15 late. Uh, T-Man, you're off on this <laughs> one. Domestic <laughs> violence charges are a great way to win in divorce court. Are they really? What, how do you, what, what do you win? Well you, well, you get to protect more of your stuff. I was assuming oh. it wouldn't really matter because not much matters in divorce court. They pretty much make it so simple. Everyone just splits things down the middle out here. But I guess there is something that does go into effect with certain judges when they're presiding over certain cases of sure. a divorce variety. I thought it was basically, up. Oh, you cheated on her, don't care, you did what? Okay, don't care, you did what? Okay, 50-50. Mm, I think abuse, I mean, it probably helps women a lot, so it should go the other way. Mm-hmm. 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 She should have beat the ass on that bitch and stuck a fist up her butt. Wow! Whoa. Yeah, you know when it's a little... A little bit borderline. I kind of read it all soft. Yeah, I know. That way we can't hear it. Right. Yeah, not the whole thing. Because <laughs> the kids know not to turn off the radio then. How many dogs is Terry eating this week? Oh, <laughs> oh nice. People love it. Mm. Well, you have the answer. Last I checked, I think it was three. In a drunken rage, I punched my husband in the face with my keys. <gasps> He called my mom and told her she had 10 minutes to pick me up before he killed me. Oh. <laughs> that is ample warning, Terry. Yeah, that's, uh, great. Yeah, that's a good 10 minute window. Mm. Right, right, right. Hopefully, mom didn't live far. Mm. Wow, can you or imagine else. that phone Wife wouldn't have lived long. <laughs> no. Can you imagine that phone call from your son in law? Get over here. That's you're the on the clock. That's the call every bomb watched again. Yes. Huh? Your daughter has 10 minutes to live. I know you live 25 minutes away, but figure it out. Find <laughs> the rope right now. Right. Mm-hmm. You think it's going to be a happy thing? Hey, how are you guys doing? Well, you're, you know, going to die. Mm hmm. T Man, I want some tired freeze double one point. Wow. You didn't catch any of that. I was, I double said so- something. Double what? Double the point. What? Double the I'm trying to talk without moving my lips. Stare that way. I didn't really say it for the SEC. Yeah. Double the Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Double the point. Okay. That's what you look like if you got Botox. <laughs> what? Not able to move your face. <laughs> when do we hear John John live from the mental institution, T-Man? He is retarded and an idiot. <laughs> Mm-hmm. True that. and true. <laughs> T-Man, does bone or breath have political aspirations? If so, it sounds... Huh? Huh? Yes. If so, I'm here to tell him I will reveal his sliding ways on the T-Man The Morning Show. That virgin pootie slayer. What? Virgin pootie slayer, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they're referring to you. Sounds like it. That was your nickname in college, right? <laughs> A bone of breath? <laughs> a virgin booty slayer. Uh, <laughs> it's my screen name. Mm. How do they know that? At yahoo.com. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so sad.
<laughs> Pulling her breath. Mm. Mm. Someone pissed off at you, Terry, because uh, they said if the situation was reversed as far as the chat eating story, you would want you would want life for the man who punched a woman in the face and here uh, you are I, no i got punched in the face and they went to jail and, i know so but, all right it seems like you're being lenient on domestic violence in the in the uh, other fashion woman on man domestic no. violence no, I, that's, I think, that's the that's the texter's take on it i'm sensing though. i really haven't said anything about it i think that she should have been arrested you have a comment on boner breath uh, boner breath <laughs> hmm. oh. daniel you uh, have made it on the program good morning sir yeah, I have a problem. Okay, we're here to and help you, Daniel. That's and you're and you're the man for the the question. Well, I appreciate you acknowledging that, Daniel. Thank you for the call, and uh, we'll do our best to help you. What can we do for you, Daniel? I'm going through like a separation with my wife and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll call her mom. No, well, <laughs> and tell her she got is, ten minutes. The, the, the thing is, why why do they say I need space? Hmm. Why do women say that? Well. I'm the I'm the Daniel that Stephen Kilbert met in Anna Cordes, and I'm just oh. And your wife, you're married. Yeah, your wife is saying kid. she needs space. Wow. Well, not the best side in the world as far as the well-being of your marriage is concerned. There, Daniel, if that's something that means something to you. Well, it does. It means the world. If to your me, marriage I'll... is something that means something to you, Daniel, this isn't <laughs> the best sign that you could be getting. That's for sure. You want to make that perfectly clear. You care well, about your marriage. Well, I, this is the way I feel about it. I told her like this. I go, if you need space to figure out what we need to do as far as a couple, I'll give you the space. Now, if you want space to go out to the bar and the club and go out and get drunk, and well, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, then just It's the little that, that really is the Western troubling part, Terry, yeah. because if a woman just went out and got drunk and then just uh, went home and slept it off... I don't think any man would have a huge problem with that. It's the letter that he cannot even think about without going into some kind of rage, Terry. Right. Well, any, I don't think any man would be able to handle knowing that his wife wants to uh, sometimes she can go out and soar her wild oats and then come back. Yeah, Daddy, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you because I don't think you'd want it any other way. Oh, geez. Uh Your wife, what she's telling you, when a woman says that to a man in the situation that you're in, that being uh, one of a marital institution, uh, not often. Does a woman say, I want my space for a while, and then say, you know what, I had my space, and I realized how great my marriage is, and I want everything back to the way it was. That's very rare. Usually space, that kind of lingo, is a prelude to I'm moving on. So why don't they just come out and say, hey... Let's do a divorce and you go your way, I go my way. Well, also to be perfectly honest with you, Daniel, maybe your wife uh, has some sense that if that if that conversation actually happened, that she's worried about what you're capable, perhaps, of doing. Maybe you she... You know what? Do you I, have a- I, I got kids with this woman, and uh, Stephen Kilbert met my little guy, and my, little, and my kids mean the world to me. If I need to let go it's, and let go, I can still be a father from afar and stuff. I still love this woman. She's the mother of my kids. Yeah, this is heartbreaking to hear. This man is in love with his wife. It takes two to keep a loving marriage working. Right. And uh, he's, a, he's a man in love, wanting to just simply keep things going with his wife, mm-hmm. and he's seeing it fall apart, and he has no control over the situation. Is there any more heartbreaking and depressing than hearing this call right now, Terry? No. A, guy, a guy who sounds like a good guy? Now, of course, we're not hearing her side of the story. We can only hear what this man is telling us. Well, you can I hear can just from the you, tone I of his voice. You can hear just from the tone of his voice that this man man's heart, his little heart, yep. is breaking. I know. Hey man. Yes, let sir. Me tell you, let me tell you something she would tell you if she was on the phone with you. Well, let's call her and find out. Will, will she talk to us or what? She can't. She can't. She, well, she's working I at Because glued her mouth shut last night. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's tied up in my basement. <laughs> Why can't she talk to us? Because when she's working, she's a medical reception. She's running back and forth. And for All right, well, what would she time. tell us? You tell us. It means a lot for us to hear what she would uh, say Four through years. your words. Go ahead. Four years ago, me and her got into a little bit of a split up. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I came. I came home from work, and she was having a bad day. She was pregnant with my daughter. And uh, I came home from work, and all my stuff's thrown all over the lawn, team man. Oh, Underwears, yeah. boxers, t-shirts, pants, <laughs> shirts, shoes, everything. And what inspired her to do that? Was there something that set her off in particular? Do you remember or no? I, 
Hey, man, I don't know. I just know that uh, she was pregnant. She was moody. I don't know if I didn't get the right... Uh, well, my wife is pregnant and moody, but my clothes are right in their drawers. At least for now. <laughs> you yeah, just so, never know. You come so, home today so, and they're... That'll never so happen. Trying, so was, you left so your wife's face out. To, <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw. So I was still trying to have a relationship with her and whatnot, but it wasn't working. So, you know, uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up uh, being with somebody. Ah. Uh, uh, but you were on a break. Hey, but no, <laughs> Too no. She didn't I, know about hey, it. Hey, I wasn't expecting that either. So, well, how things, was that sex? Pretty damn good, wasn't it? Oh, the best. Whoa. I if I if I were to comment down that, I'd be re-victimizing her. And uh, victimizing? What was she like? Fourteen? What do you mean re-victimizing like her? His wife, I think. Oh, oh his wife. She'd be, she'd be going through that. She'd be going through that stage <laughs> where you hurt me. Oh, she's not listening. She's taking care of medical billing. So how was that sex? Was that a pretty damn good uh, situation for a couple of minutes there or what? A couple of minutes, yeah. Yeah. Was it with somebody that she knew as well or well, just an... No. Their sister. Wow. Yeah. No, it was, it was nobody <laughs> she was that she knew. But, then, but check this out. It's been four years now. And it's been four years that I've been trying to get my stuff together. And I've been just trying to focus on my family, focus on my kids. Focus so you on my... have changed your ways over the past four years to the point where you are the model husband. Is that what you're saying? I'm trying to be the model husband. I don't think well, I Well, where find... do you come up short? Let's find out where you fall short of being the model husband. What are your issues that she may be able to uh, uh, tell us about if she were on the line right now? What would she say are the reasons that you are not the model husband? Well, when I met her... I've always been a pretty cool uh, people person. I've been uh, funny. I've been outgoing. Yeah, the, I've been, forget uh, all, just tell me where you come up short. Where are you not the model husband? Do you drink? Do you still cheat? Do you still... No, uh... no, I don't drink. I've been clean and sober for two and a half years. Um, Good job. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's uh, not a shortcoming probably, of yours. What probably, else? Probably in paying attention to her emotional needs. Paying attention to her emotional needs? Women have those? Yeah, we do. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Tell maybe if you... Get, get rid of some of her needs. Wow. Maybe yeah. if you check <laughs> you in tell with her your stop wife. Being so needy. Whoa. Jeez. But isn't it kind of, you know, usual that guys, after talk- they cheat, they become the model husband all of a sudden? Mm. They kind of, you know, no. For four years, though, this it's, man's been the model husband. Man, it's, and- just, it's just kind of hard, because I've been trying my darndest for the past four years, and it's been... Honestly. I'll be ten years with her. Guys have a hard enough time after four weeks being the model husband after they cheat. <laughs> yeah. This guy's made it four years. That's saying something. A little bit. What does she mean by emotional needs? Like, well, what does she say that you don't uh, do? Does be, she, you don't hug be, her enough? What? Just, just being attentive to her needs. If we go somewhere just to be with her. just Hugging. Uh, you can do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You can actually have contact. She wants, to go, she wants you to go places with her and stuff? Well, I, I try to go places with her. I'm just, it's just kind of hard sometimes. When well, was the last time you guys had a date night? Yeah. Yo, actually, T man, I was trying to call you guys up because I wanted to go to Summer Jam with her just to get her out and about, just to go do something. And I had talked to Steven about that when he first met me. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm that, asking you a question. When was the last time you and her had a night just between you and her, the couple that is, or was, or could be? Probably Valentine's. Valentine's. Wow. We have to go back to February for the last time you and her went out. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. But you have kids, and it's not easy for you and her just to get out like uh, maybe it exactly. was back in the way old days. Oh, exactly. All right. So you're saying you don't want to pay attention to her emotional needs. Do you Do you talk to her on a regular basis or what? Uh, well, you being a married person, you can tell that sometimes women are not easy to talk to. <laughs> what? We're always easy to talk to. Oh, not always. So, Terry, so not, what do you when you pick when you're picking up on a moment or two or a week uh, where she's having a bad uh, week or whatever, and and she's not easy to talk to? What do you do? Do you avoid her completely or what? I'll tell you what I do. I put on a show for her on TV that she likes to watch. Which is, she's a woman, so she likes to watch Lifetime. I'll sit my butt down there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, sit my wife, I'll, I'll sit my butt down there and watch a Lifetime show that's mean nothing to me, and I'll rub her feet and I'll try to get some conversation Aww. out of. I'll try to get some conversation out of her during the commercial. The man's watching. Lifetime. Tori spelling <laughs> Lifetime movies with her, Terry, rubbing her feet, wow. and yet she's saying she needs her space. Well, there's something deeper. Are there. you hearing this? I am. The man is trying. He is. He's been clean and sober. Why? For her. You think he's clean and sober for him? No. He's clean and sober for her. <laughs> He'd be drinking every night if it was for him. That's right. <laughs> Feels good. It does. And T-Man. Yes. 
And team, man, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Latino and stuff, and we take this sometimes to heart, and we listen to Mexican music, and Mexican music just breaks. It's like listening to country music sometimes. Holy cow! So you're in tears. <laughs> you're in, you're in tears when you're listening to your favorite Mexican songs. Well, yeah, you can say Selena. I can get, I Selena. can get, tear, I can get tear jerky or. I can start opening up so, on Corona, so Tecate no. Modelo. Right. Oh, oh, I wow. love that. That was my senior yeah. prom theme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so what do you, I mean, you you have a good read on what's going on here. Where are you going to be in one year? Do you think you'll be with her? Or you think she's going to shut your ass out? Oh. If she throws my ass out to you, man, it'll take me a while to recuperate. A lot of the guys that are my friends. Lovely, what's serious? Mm -hmm. No Harold Reynolds this year. Oh. Yeah, kind of just got uh, swept away. He never yeah. got, he never got his day in court. Well, so to speak. That we know of. Uh mm -hmm. He probably was just like, yeah, he got me dead to rights. <laughs> I grew up just about everything that moved in this uh, studio here. Don't want to fight it. Mm hmm. I don't know. How do you go from being a an anchor guy for like 12 years to the next day just being fired and there was no real to do about it. Right. I mean, geez, give us some something. Is that how your legacy is going to come crashing down, Stephen? I think so, probably. All of the sexual harassment just juices will just come to the Whoa. surface or what? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yes, I have a long line of that, I'm sure. Oh. I saw your boy, uh, Scott Van Pelt, on the oh, sports center the other oh, night. Oh, yeah, so did I. Oh, uh, Scotty boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, boy. Is he like the skinny little blonde dude who wears glasses? Is that who? Because that's who I'm picturing. Yeah. I don't think he has any hair, really. I don't think he has oh, any he's bald, hair. I but it would be blonde. Yeah, it would be. If, oh, I think that's he what I was thinking. Shaves it. Mm -hmm. Sitting next to Stuart Scott. I wonder whatever happened uh, if he called her back, just called her bitch, and everything that just was crying out to be said. <laughs> probably getting married. Mm hmm. <laughs> She thought, oh, how cute. Why do you say he's my boy when he's the, you're the one who <laughs> loved his message? Well, it's kind of. A joke, but yes. Oh, I took you so seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, how does he do as a sports center anchor? He does well. And what are you doing watching Sports Center? I don't know. I just happened upon it one night. You happened some, upon it? Well, for some reason. Can you can you happen right off it or no? <laughs> oh, I did. I saw him on there, and I said, "Oh, I can't." But he's my idol, I guess. Mm -hmm. He's your idol. Okay. I've been yeah. looking to see maybe he got fired for doing that or something, but he was on there. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, you can't get fired for being a dork. For leaving <laughs> goofy messages and being dorky? Well, I mean, there Man, was... you wouldn't have stood a day in this place. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find that, uh... Oh, never mind. Oh. He would be... Hookers and coke. No, no, wrong guy. <laughs> He's the guy who definitely didn't get that's, fired. That's the one Stephen really envies. Yeah. <laughs> Deep inside. What happened to oh, Marv sorry. Albert? I mean, he was fired and then came back, and now he's stronger well, than ever, right? Well, that was his bogus allegations. That was just some woman that it was proven over time just made the whole thing up. Well, didn't they go to court and stuff, though? Yeah, but uh, he just, yeah. So he doesn't like show tunes? He, he doesn't like, sing he doesn't dance in lingerie? Around his, doesn't sing show tunes in lingerie. <laughs> doesn't bite women on the back. He does screw around on his... on his. He did screw around on his wife, but no, he can't well, play a man for that. Right. Oh, he can't. I mean, geez. If it's put Part in front of, of you, you can't say no. Part of being a man. <laughs> What's a man supposed to do? Oh, he's supposed to turn down and be faithful, yes. Mm-hmm. Like I've done. Every time. Mm-hmm. You're all looking at me not knowing what to believe. <laughs> Think the best of me. We do. You may just be right. Okay. Huh? We may. <laughs> or we are. Well, you know, I like to keep it a... A little mystery. A little mystery, yeah. Oh. Because we found out how boring it is to Jeez. be... No. Anyway, <laughs> where are we going with this? I don't know. He's the one who brought up your boy, Scott Van Pelt. <laughs> the bottom line I'm, is I'm turning into everything you thought Killbreath really was. Oh, wow. Right before your very eyes. Really? Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. What oh, a welcome. metamorphosis. Not to say he is everything you thought he was, but little by little you realize he never was. <laughs> I mean, we all thought he was smart and a straight-A student. Not true. We all thought he was <laughs> conservative, <laughs> level-headed, and yeah. uh, and basically uh, a just down-to-earth sexual person when really 
Who knows what goes beyond closed doors and beyond the mind of Stephen Kilbreath? He's a predator. <laughs> Whoa! I would go that far. God, but I, no See, kidding. Stephen likes to take it extra <laughs> far, so you I think know. that there's no chance of him actually being in, yeah, somewhere better. in the middle of the shade of gray there? Yeah. Nobody, nobody can hear you scream in carnation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I can't find this guy, Van Pelting. So oh, whatever. damn it. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> but there's never a problem finding this guy. And I'm telling you right now, oh, there, geez. T-Man, you know, concrete is on strike. You know what? A roving reporter. I want some analysts out there I, who uh, call on one woman to get punched in the face. Uh, what's that now, sir? No, and I just right. need to... I just need to be able to go out this weekend and show her a good time and just let oh, her know geez. that she can have a good time being with her husband and stuff. I'm not just, I can't just let 10 years just go. If that's what she wants, then I'm just going to pack you're, it up and... But you're not going to go out without a couple of final Hail Marys here. Is that the deal or what? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, okay, well, good luck on those. Uh, oh, and the fact that she is willing to take you up on that is not the worst sign in the world by any means. There is still hope where there's a will. There's an inheritance. Okay. Very hey, so, good. Hey, so T-Man. <laughs> yes, sir. So if I get dumped to the curb, what's the best way to get over it? Well, deal that with it as it happens, okay? We'll deal oh. with it in real time. You call <laughs> us back and keep us posted, okay? Instead of, call, instead of calling Dr. Phil, I'm going to call T-Man. There you go. Woo! Give a lot better advice than that dumb cracker. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those phrases you never want to hear. Mm -hmm. We should take a break. <laughs> Whatever she said. I need space. I need oh, space. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Man. Really? All right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Let me give away some Emerald Downs. Speaking of needing space, Terry, some Emerald Downs VIP passes into the Pepsi Suite, the suite put together by Pepsi Cola <laughs> on Friday night, <laughs> August 25th, <laughs> where the wild horses couldn't give you away. Wild uh, horses. Yeah. Who wants to be a part of that? You're on the air. Hello. What's up? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, T-Man? It's going to be worse than a Seattle club. It's going to be worse than a Belltown club, Terry, this VIP suite. Mm -hmm. This VI, this VIP get-together at Emerald Downs. It's going to be all guys. Wow. I'll bring my wife. Oh, now you're talking. Uh, what's your name? Jonathan. The amazing Jonathan. Uh, He's funny. You want to go to Emerald Downs? I do. You want VIP passes? You know it. You got them. How old are you? I'm 35. 35. Way to go, Jonathan. Wow. I was thinking maybe he wasn't old enough to gamble. He's 35. Uh, congratulations, Jonathan. Hang on the line. We're going to take your information. You have won those VIP passes. Nice. What's your wife look like? She got MySpace? What, huh? No, not on MySpace. All right. How do you know? I yeah. love wives on MySpace. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Remind me to do a segment on You've met me, wives though. on MySpace. Oh, jeez. You've met, met me, though. Who, me personally or everybody? Everybody. Yeah, Where? I was down there with my wife for the, trying to get that Vegas ticket. Uh, mm. my, oh, yeah. You're military people. That's right. Yeah, she's pretty hot. She's nice. Yeah. You want to look the other nice. That's good you think that. You want to look the other way and let us take her in a horse stall or what? <laughs> in a barn. Wow. Huh? What's that? Oh, never mind. All right, hang <laughs> on. Pasty will ask you. Leave that alone. Oh, yeah. Pasty. Yes, sir. Do you see what I'm seeing, that this VIP suite is really becoming like a little sword fight? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take the next five female callers for VIP passes to Emerald Downs. No problem. Oh, he'll like that. <laughs> it's a sword fight. Pasty will kill everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. When, with what? Nobody stands a chance. He is Zorro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Zorro is sword fighter. I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Never really saw it. I'm a feed you. Yo, I tell you the rest when I see you. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, uh, Terry, John John is on the line. Okay. Uh, there's been a little altercation between John John and Vinny the Pooh. Uh-oh. Let me give you the quick synopsis of it. Uh, Vinny the Pooh wrestled John John's cell phone away from him when he came down to the lobby of the building this morning. Uh -huh. And Vinny the Pooh ran across the street and, uh, Ed, if you are familiar with the street in front of our building, it's a high-traffic street, which is hard to get across. It takes a while. Yeah, it is. And he ran across the street and threw John John's cell phone in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> At which point, oh. Vinny the Pooh was then called the N-word by John John. What? And uh, after he was unaffected by that, John John then decided to call him a Puerto Rican slur, <laughs> thinking maybe that would, would do something, and Vinny the Pooh is not Puerto Rican. <laughs> I, I, don't, that. I mean, he said it. He's an idiot. I had, I had to dump that. He can't say that. Jeez. But that was quite the barrage of, of names. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't even know there were that many. <laughs> yeah. What the hell's going on around here? Let me call Vay the Pooh and find out what his side of the story is. If you can hear that. Oh, jeez. Wait. Easy. I'm put John John on hold. <laughs> <laughs> this will give us enough time to have our delay system ramp back up. <laughs> That's Vinny drop some f bombs. Oh. Seattle. Uh, Vinny the Pooh, you're manning the front desk. Is that right? I am manning the front desk. Word is, I didn't see this happen, and I didn't necessarily get it from you, but I've heard through the radio grapevine that you took John John's phone, ran it across the street, and threw it into a bush. True or not true? This is very true. And John John has prickers all over his body now, <laughs> retrieving his cell phone. Prickers? Mm-hmm. I, I get care it. care less, dude. Like, I was trying everything. Like, the only thing really holding me back from hitting him and breaking his phone in the middle of the street was potentially getting fired. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. Like, if I could... That would get you a promotion. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah, what? They'd love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, John, John, you have a retort to all this that's happened against you this morning? I have actually recorded everything from the time I left the third floor down to the studio or downstairs. That's right. John, John is wired for sound. He's recorded everything. <laughs> I've got it on recording and Vinnie the Pooh, the next time you do that, bitch, I will Shakespeare your Vinnie Pooh ass. Well, let's hear the, the phone going in the bush. <laughs> yeah, let's hear the audio of your phone uh, being thrown into a bush and you crying like a little a thrill. Yeah, I wasn't crying, T-Mac. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, stop, my bad. I've seen tears. I don't know. Yes, the you word know, is you were in the- tears when Vinnie the Pooh threw your phone been- into a bush because you thought you'd never be able to get it out. For once, okay. no, star. All right. I tell you what, you're the feeling it for stuffing this morning in the front desk, but I guarantee, look forward to at least 150 calls. Remember, Jimmy Fred Weeman? You're going to find out what your phone's going to be born of at 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning, bitch. Mm-hmm. Wow. Anyway, so we have multiple threats. Yeah. yeah he's, Vinny- a, he's aware that he, Vinny the Pooh, is filling in for, uh, what's her name? Stephanie. I don't even know her name at the front desk, yeah. but John John knows. Uh, Vinny the Pooh is filling in this morning, and uh, Vinny the Pooh uh, should look forward, according to John John, to a never-ending stream. Of harassing phone calls. Well, well, John John's threatening, like, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning stuff, too. Like, like Vinny's not already up. Yeah, Vinny's mm-hmm. up all the time. Right, he never sleeps. So it's not going to affect him in any way. Well, yeah, it's not like Vinny the Pooh doesn't put in 12, 15 hours a day. Well, I don't think you can do anything, really, John John, love, to affect Vinny the Pooh. It seems I like love Vinny the Pooh, he hates you. what he did this morning was really unacceptable. I've <laughs> <laughs> never seen... No, seriously, I like Vinny the Pooh. Well, he hates cool. you, him, and there's nothing he can do to you that would be unacceptable. Yeah, middle 18, man, when your security got locked out the other day, why is Vinny thinking he's some security person? Well, Vinny the Pooh uh, just why knows that you're one of the few brother? asses that is a 140-pound frame, can kick with no doubt, and he's not afraid of some little uh, guy like you with scoliosis. So... <laughs> Is living effing off. Oh, jeez. I'd love to see that. You know, yeah, me too. Vinny well. the Pooh, is there any possibility? No, did I, did no, I misjudge no this tale oh, of the no, tape? Is there any I outside mean, chance I mean, that John I mean, John could kick your ass? No, none. I could be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I could be dead drunk. Hey, we're running out of time, Vinny. Do you realize that? What did I say? What did I say to you in the elevators when we're going downstairs? Well, look, well, 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 oh, come, well come back. I'll, I'll, sh- I'll show you. I'll show you right here in the middle of the street. Wow. Oh. He is willing to meet you in the middle of the street right now, John John, if you're so interested to find out whose ass would kick whose ass. And I'll make sure the recording happens, eh, Vinny? Look, what's John John think he's so. I don't know. The got recording? one over on Vinny the Pooh because he records. I'm already out in Tacoma right now. Look, look, oh, I right. out. When, I, sure when, I, when I kicked him out, when I kicked him out, he came back up like five minutes later and he was afraid to get off the elevator. He put his hands up and I start walking towards the door and he hopped back in the elevator. Mm-hmm. No, you did walk towards the door. I, I put my hands in the air because you're on the phone. Oh, it's oh, amazing okay. how fast you got to Tacoma, you. John John. But I'll tell you what, John John, <laughs> the challenge has been laid down. If there's any confusion as to who can kick whose ass, Vinny the Pooh is ready to meet you at the straight in front of the building. He will be there if you so wish. 
but we have well, a very red neon car. We have a very strong suspicion that you will not be anywhere near I the building. Ass. I don't care in a boxing yeah, ring, kick match in boxing, whatever goes down. Okay. Oh, what the little Puerto Rican's ass! Well, uh, don't, don't hit. I, I, I know guess we'll, I guess we'll have to take you. Your, yeah, we'll have to take your word for it because there's no way you're showing up. There's no doubt about that, Terry. Uh -huh. He's already in Tacoma. Uh -huh. yeah, he, he owns a helicopter. It <laughs> sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think a helicopter could have gotten Speeding bullet. Benny the Pooh. It finally has someone who's afraid of him. Then you confront John John. Hey, that was funny. Uh, you know, he tries to act like your friend. Yeah, it's all for the show. Yeah, he's a big talker. But when you confront him, it's all different. It. Yeah. It's, it's all for the show, but he called him the N-word off the air. Right. I know. That's not anything to do with the show, by mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. No. <laughs> Didn't and one of the out. words that he said in that diatribe that I had to dump Terry was the N-word. Mm -hmm. That was one of the words that was uh, perhaps inappropriate for Eric. Jeez. That almost warrants an ass beating on it, you know, just in and of itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's too bad he's in Tacoma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Can't get him. Mm. I'm going to go downstairs to Tacoma right now. Otherwise, <laughs> see ya. if he wasn't in Tacoma, we'd be witnessing a hell of a fight outside, yeah, Jerry. Would. But he uh, he slipped away to Tacoma over the past three minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yes. He uh, uh, took the express lane, obviously. Right. Yeah. <laughs>